All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. What a transition, that was very awkward, but welcome nonetheless to the third place KDL match. My name is Crimson and I am super excited to be here today with none other than himself, the casting legend, Stu. Stu, welcome. <laughs> the casting legend, I don't wanna go that far, but. You uh, you're, you're a veteran at this point, casting wise. I think that, you know, I remember you casting your know, first three seasons. What's not to say the fourth is your legendary status? <laughs> you know, I would be really excited to be casting the finals, but I am busy playing in it. Oh, so, true. Uh, oh, ego. You came out here just to ego. I think uh, it's going to be. Bit. Is it your first finals that you're not casting? It will be. Okay. Super excited. Okay, okay. But your first time in finals. Yep. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, well, speaking of a team that is not in the finals, PGS versus ABD, this is, however, for the third place finish, so still very, very good. You still get uh, KDL money, so to speak. Uh, you're still taking money from us. 
But nonetheless, it is ABD <laughs> versus PGS here. We expected, you know, a little bit of troll here coming up from PGS, and it doesn't really look like it is too troll. They are going in their standard pick order. They still could kind of flip that script, but for the most part, ABD are looking to kind of take revenge or validate their season for the most part. They had a rough start. They had somewhat of, you know, picking it up from the ground, so to speak, towards that mid to end season. And now here they are, unfortunately not for the finals, but they could be looking at their first ever third place finish. Yeah, it's definitely interesting for them. Uh, I wanted to point out while we're still in the pick and ban phase here, you can see that uh, PGS taking notes from our team's survey core and not leaving that Skarnus there, if you know, because that is just absolutely broken. And they will uh, ban that away. And another game where Penelope will just be in the corner crying on his boat as uh, he's not allowed to play Seraphine for maybe the 20th game in a row. Oh, right, I was just about to say, he was able to play that one amazing game that he popped off, and unfortunately, ever since, for, to his dismay, he has not been able to pick it. But talking about something that could be played here in the jungle, not really that Skarner pick, but definitely still works as good with the chem tank. The Volibear Flex now coming out for this R1. R2 more than likely going to be an AD. I don't think that they really want to limit Dilly's champ pool any more uh, than, you know, ABD for the matter have. You know, they banned out that Jinx, something that Dilly has been really proficient on that helped them overcome that uh, that GME squad. And then unfortunately did fall down to never lose, but still. But no, they actually want to go against the script here and blind a Rakan knowing that so much engage is still up and the Morgana jungle is still up as well. So very interesting pick coming out from ABD. Yeah, well, you think you pointed out with the Morgana jungle and as well as the Morgana into the support role as well can really give Rakan a hard time. But with champs like Volibear and depending on how ABD drafts, he can sort of overcome it. Most notably though, this is going to be taking away a champion from PGS as their support is pretty renowned for playing Rakan Karma. And we will see Karma picked up and will almost definitely be going into the support role. Well, 100%. I don't think that they we, that sorry we will be getting a solo lane karma. I'd be very very shocked or surprised if that were the case. But nonetheless, though, you know, on this B3, I seriously think that you kind of just had to blind jungle here, even if that volley is still a flex towards top. I don't think that. Oh wow, they actually really want to answer it with an Urgot pick. Okay, so they kind of are forcing the volley bear now to go to go to jungle here with this Urgot pick. Interesting. Yeah, it is definitely very interesting. I think Urgot is also just a high priority for this team. I know when we were scouting up against PGS, we saw that Matt, uh, PGS's top winner, oh, has been right. playing a lot of games on it. Right, yeah. So we tried to kind of pick around it or either straight right bend it out. And you can see Dilly's uh, signature Ezreal coming out. <laughs> signature playing Ezreal. A, uh, playing a cosplay of me from Season 2, where, uh, you know what? Nothing good is up. Let's just pick Ezreal. How... How badly can you end on Ezreal? It's not, it is pretty hard to run it down on that champion. So we'll see if he's able to uh, keep that legacy going. But as someone, who got... is, as someone who is an, a Dilly denier, you know, so to speak, a DD, <laughs> a Dilly denier, I want to ask you, you know, in your honest opinion here, do you think that this Ezreal Rakan is such a nice viable blind here, especially uh, like you don't know the full extent of the comp on the side of pgs right now they still could go with that morgana jungle it still is available smart band coming out from pgs on that orn band it is one of the direct counters actually to this ergot pick um you know two far most runners for that ergot uh counter as well being mordekaiser and kennen um you know i get that rave has a meme associated with him for always building <laughs> bomby or sorry nami no i said it right bomby cinder um so can't really pivot into a sunfire on mord but you definitely could go that frostfire gauntlet which has actually been uh making the rounds here and there uh i'm very interested to see though but i don't think that you know i'm not giving up on dilly i, I think that you've given up on him i'm not giving up on him all these bands though on the side of pgs really oriented towards rape so far yeah, you see those last two picks really orienting towards the Rave because uh, I think the Malphite is one of the champs that's always banned against because Malphite is such like a draft win champion where if your mm -hmm. enemy fucks up draft and you're all short range, then Malphite just pretty much auto wins you the game. Oh, we could be saying this has been a little bit of a sleeper for Rave for a while. He's kind of refused to pick it, but if he picks this Maokai, could be. Oh, it's the, oh, oh, the oh, hover. No. Is, it, is it just a troll hover? Because. Kled is still available here, and it does seem like the side of ABD have a lot of uh, AP at this point. And so if you have that Kled as a sustainable source of AD alongside the Ezreal, which again, Kled is a direct counter to Urgot, it's really nice here. This is more than likely a Teemo hover. Um, if this isn't minus two bands for game two, but 
I'd be very shocked here not to see a jungle pick. And yeah, we are going to be seeing a Hecarim possibly coming out here. Hecarim's still very, very viable despite the chem take nerfs. Uh, I do believe the chem take nerfs are next patch, correct? Or uh, no, they, they already they already nerfed it. So it was 65 to 55 this patch, but they're going to nerf it even further. Oh, yeah. I mean, poor Toma, you know, at the end of the last series, he was talking about all these chem tank abusers and it's right, like his team is right. forced him <laughs> into becoming one himself. True, actually <laughs> true, actually true. It's unfortunate, you know, you either live long enough to see your- or Sorry, you either live long enough to die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. And it does seem like Toma has become the villain on, uh, you know, when it comes to this series. Uh, now this Orianna mid here. Ah, uh, oh, solo lane is... Lee Sin. Solo yes, lane Lee Sin. I know Penelope was hyping this up because uh, we were all talking, I think, Penelope, Tanner... Exoria and a few others are all talking about this like Soul and Lee Sin and what it can do in these games. And I think most of us wrote it off as kind of like a solo queue abusable thing. Right. But Penelope here trusting in the ego and that uh, is gonna be looking to outplay <laughs> their Oriana here in the mid lane. So it's definitely something to look well, out for. Here. It's it's a nice little flex comp that ABD have. I've I don't remember the last time I've seen a Ramus solo, to be honest. But 20 seconds left looking at these comps. I want serious predictions, Stu, and oh my goodness, I can't do it. <laughs> 2 1 ABD. I know it's wild, but 2 1 ABD. You know, I honestly, denier. I am a Dilly Denier, and as much as, you know, ABD XD as it is, I still do think it will be 2 1 ABD. Okay. Okay, so. I, I think the games will be close, though. But especially with the draft in this game, Ramus is just a hard lane counter to Urgot, and then Lee Sin should be able to make something happen in the mid lane. And with that, the amount of mobility that ABD has, Rakan is going to be able to really maneuver around it. It should allow Kawhi to uh, do what he does best. So they should be able to make something happen in this game. All right, you heard it from the man himself. We are going to be going into our three-minute spectator delay. When we come back, we will be in-game. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the third-place I guess finale final here, the third place match between PGS versus ABD. There's no time for redemption. Those flags you wave, will they hold?
All right, and welcome back to the KDL. We are now just loading into our third place match set between PGS versus ABD for this game. PGS is opting to take blue side and ABD on the return with that R5 on red side. I believe the R5 was this Lee Sin, so uh, not only is Lee Sin blind, but the blind pick as well there. Or rather, it's not really a blind pick, but I guess it kind of is at the same time since Lee Sin is blind. But regardless, solo lane Lee Sin here with the TP as well. So he's going to be TPing in for some spicy insects here and there. We will switch off into the game as soon as possible, though. All right, and here we go into our third place match. Again, this is the Legendary Stew cast. So forgive if there is some ABD bias here from him. <laughs> I understand. I understand, you know. Rave wanted to take down Stu. Dilly has been talking up a storm as well. Kawhi Star has been muted. Penelope is simping. Poseidon <laughs> is, you know, indifferent. But at the same time, I really feel like it's going to be Dilly Diff. I said it in that break, and I'm saying it now. I have full faith in my boy Dilly. He is representing Idol Court. He is representing the hopes and dreams of, uh, you know, gold players alike, so to speak. So I really hope that he is able to take this win. Um, granted, they did pick an Ezreal Rakan lane, which is not going to be as viable as the Kaiser Rakan lane. But, uh, you know, with the little poke here and there that they are able to do onto Karma or Kaiser, respectively, I think should be fine. And I, I don't really see a problem with this until Karma does end up getting that Moonstone eventually. And at that point, it's just going to be really unbearable if the Karma is in your lane and assisting you with the fight. Yeah, some uh, hot tech coming in for you for the support since uh, it all pretty much changed the season as we do get this mastery spam here and here. Right, guys. it seems like everyone <laughs> actually has that mastery, uh, what do you call it, hotkey to their ult. So they're all spamming their ult key. <laughs> so. uh, Karma and most of the trenches these days tend to go Shirelas over Moonstone. Okay. Because of the Moonstone nerfs and Shirelas being buffed whenever you empower an ally, which is shield, anything like that, shield heal. It gives them that kind of move speed, so it does really set them up for that kind of chase down and that kind of success. Right. But uh, really, I think this bot lane, level 1, will pretty much decide this lane. If Dilly gets hit by a Mantra Q, it's going to be very rough for him. And a nice little heads up play from Kawhi would be to uh, start the Rakan That is <laughs> not efficient at all. Here, Could Rave actually yeah. go down here? He's going to have to flash he to here. Flash. He has to flash. One more. He has to flash. Oh, Forgot. okay. He didn't want to flash knee cannon. He had the knee cannon towards the top side, but we're just going to miss so much now just because of that aggressive trade. Wow. Yeah, I was not I mean, expecting that. Started off with the W, started off with the defensive curl, and then it just completely does not go his way here. Level two going to be procced on both mid laners. Yeah, that's, that's so unfortunate. He has that D shield there, so he has that passive regeneration. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's what most people would say when you just kind of have a bad level one. It's like, all right, well, I at least I have D shield, but still, it's not an enviable position. And I did see they had that ward onto Poseidon's red buff. So if Hecarim wants to come in and try and contest this red buff, they can make it a 3v3 since Ray will be pretty much out of the fight with his current HP. Almost every single Ramus top actually is going after Shock, but we are going to be looking at a fight here. Resonating Strike does go a little bit wide there. But yeah, almost every single Ramus top that I'm looking at right now apparently does go that Aftershock, and it has a 47% win rate. It is extremely low to the point where it's not even listed as a top laner. It, it just says question yeah. marks. There is no, you know, margin of, you know, 5 out of 50 or anything like that. It, it literally is question mark out <laughs> yeah. of question mark. Kawhi Star now going to go forward there. And I'll be looking to engage here. Resonating Strike yet again is going to go miss. B spam though. Yeah, from what I've heard from Rave, because I talked to him a little bit about what he was going to play against Matt, and apparently Ramus is like this super like uh, well-kept secret of once you get your Bramble Vest and you're able to taunt the Urgot, he will just kill himself on your body, so you need a little bit of time. But uh, once you get that kind of setup going and you're able to taunt him, or Ramus, or Urgot even just tries to go into Ramus, he shouldn't be able to do too much. But it is a pretty uh, unknown thing is, you know, first of all, who plays Ramus? A... And B, who plays Ramus top, after all? 
Alright, and that is going to be a uh, somewhat uneventful first blood in the mid lane. Now we could be looking at another trade kill here. No, it will not be, and it will be a clean two for O oh, around the map for ABD here. Leeson barely able to survive that Hecarim's just entrance there into the mid lane. We're looking really, really Monka S right now for the side of Dilly and Kawhi Star on ABD. Yeah, unfortunately for them as well, Dilly's been dropping a little bit of CS, but with the wave so pushed up and them kind of dodging a lot of this poke does mean that the angle is open for Poseidon to come bot and try and gank it, but Tome here is smartly recognizing that and is looking to steal away some bot camps to prevent Poseidon from hovering too long. Yeah, Poseidon B lining right now for his bot camps. Hecarim did have that rotation like you said, so they are smartly aware of this potential that there is for Poseidon just to roam down and get an easy gank off in the bot lane. So Toma actually opting in for that scuttle directly into the Gromp here. Poseidon unfortunately does check that Gromp. I can hear his tears from here. No <laughs> Gromp to be found. Yeah, I mean, the early game really going the way of ABD as it is right now. The fact that Lee Sin was able to pick up a kill and Volibear Bear early does mean that these two are going to be a insane duo in these river fights and then these neutral objective fights coming up in the next few minutes. And we do see that Bremble Vest picked up, so given some time, hopefully Rave can show us oh my uh, God. <laughs> why this counter pick exists. It's not looking... Yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not looking too good right now for him. He's slowly but surely making his way up back there in terms of CS. Was down by at least 50% at one point. Still could be, though, 20 versus about 40 at this point as well. I believe in the uh, CS machine that is Rave. Oh, okay, Pog. Do you believe in the Sunfire machine that is Rave? I certainly do. As soon as he picks that up, the CS is free. Sure. I honestly, CSing on tank champions is such a chore that it amazes me that he chooses to do it when we every game is Poseidon is coming to the top side here. Yeah, immediate taunt here from Rave to set up this gank. The ult now gonna be fired. Nice flash coming out from Rave to deny the ult there from uh, from Matt. But at the same time, I don't really think Rave was in any type of danger with that ult. He had above the threshold there for the most part. So. Uh, still, really good heads-up play there, and they should really try to equalize the goal difference here in the top side for Rave. Yeah, him picking up a plate there is going to be pretty massive for him. That will get him a lot of that CS deficit that he did end up building up. But uh, it looks like it is just going to be the kind of... Alright, I'm going to shove this wave in, let Volibear push the wave back into me, and I will just call Poseidon top again and he will just die. And I'm going to try to neutralize Matt that way. Let's see if Matt can maybe bring Toma up and try and help him with that in the top lane. Other than that, it is just going to be a cycle of pain for him. I mean, it's almost inviting, right? You have the Rambus who has that insta-taunt there. And it's it's really nice because Urgot also will would lack that early movement speed as well. So it's kind of a sitting duck scenario. Poseidon, on the other hand, looking for an engage here. Toma dangerously low, forced to use his ult as well defensively. Now Kelly with the flash forward. Kawhi Star is going to match that flash as well. Blasting Cone still available for Kelly. Kawhi Star is over the wall though. Wow. What was that oh. positioning? Not able just to correctly just go toe to toe with Kelly there on the Blast Cone and she somehow is able to survive. Wow. Yeah, that was a tragic misplay from Kawhi there. Not hit, I mean, if you just focus the blast cone and fo force I... her back, she dies 100% of the time. Oh, 100%. I actually thought he was situating himself so that he could hit the blast cone yeah. and then just get Kelly after. But, wow, must have just been, um, you know, something in the comms there. Now, a uh, Rave uh, rocks oh, up go. that ball there. Taunt instantly into that defensive curl. New Ramus ult. It's actually going to get proxied there from Urgot's E there. Fear Beyond Death now going to be tossed out on Rave as well, but there is no counterplay to that. Zero and three, all chat, lol, okay, never mind. Wow. <laughs> oh, here comes Toma to clean things up. Rave, ah, he no uses ult. the Q oh, defensively no already. No power ball available. Ghost is still available Wait, for Toma. Him? No, he can't. No, there's no oh, way. Oh, he can't. There's no way. How maybe if we went Sheen. Top. Yeah, maybe if we went Sheen, but... With the double ruby crystal, there's just no way. Unfortunate stuff for the side of PGS, who are already down 4 and O. Oh. Yeah, that is, uh, maybe there is some tech there. Maybe, maybe yeah. there is some dark tech there. I was telling you, man, once you get that Bramble Vest, and he even has the Steel Caps now. Yeah, well, there's no counterplay. It's pretty no over for Urgot. He just can't. <laughs> Ramus decides when you die, basically. Pretty much. Might be first item LDR. Who knows? <laughs> it may be. 
That is just super unfortunate for Matt towards in the top side. Um, they did pick this Urgot. They were expecting a lot from it, but unfortunately they are just looking at a 0-3 start. Rave now curling up as well. The taunt will come out into the defensive power curl. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah, he Rave. He just healed the off of him. Yeah, he's healing the grasp <laughs> as well. The longer actually Matt fights this, the more he's actually killing himself. <laughs> he's actually not doing any damage to Rave at this point. The Siren is situated towards top yet again here. I think this is the fourth time. Fourth you know time Matt is just charm. in comms depressed. 100% he here. Oh, no counterplay. Just go next. Just go next. You guys need to wait six more minutes. Just go next. There is this no is fun. Just type a 15 in your chat. Yeah. <laughs> no fun. All right, team. We had a good run. No fun. No fun. It does seem like uh, about 90% of, or sorry, 80% rather of the KP is towards top side here. Uh, just Poseidon repeatedly ganking Rave over and over and over again here, uh, especially situated with this nice little Ramus counter pick. Yeah, oh, really? Is tried to... Oh, Poseidon going in here oh, very deep. Oh, strike now being in. used as well. Shockwave will actually kill Poseidon here unless he flashes? What? What was that aggro drop? It didn't I, want I to fire? Oh, yeah. no, yeah, you're right. He, he ulted the tower. Oh my goodness, for whatever reason, my brain was saying that he was outside of tower's range there on the alt, but nice little play from Poseidon as well. So it seems like all these irregular, you know, jungle being played into solo lanes are doing really, really well for themselves. Whereas, unfortunately for Dilly and Kawhi Star, they're not having uh, the time of their lives here in this bot lane. Yeah, I mean, we start keeping up and farm, you know, they are still down 20 CS, which is not admirable, but... You know, as long as you're not throwing over kills, honestly, it's fine with your top side entirely winning. And the worst part is for PGS as well is that the only person who's really ahead for them is this Kaisa. And if Kaisa ever tries to go into the back line, Ramus will just be there and just taunt her, and uh, you can't kill anyone at that point. So it's uh, it's going to be difficult for PGS to kind of navigate these team fights and make something happen. It's likely going to be happening in these kind of side lanes, trying to make a split push happen or something like that. As I can't really see a team fight really going their way. 100%. This could be the fifth death here for Matt. He somehow will be able to run away here. Penelope, or sorry, Poseidon rather, going to be spotted here. They do take out the ward using the sweepers. Toma is here though on the reverse gank if need be. Toma here depressed as well, forced onto a Kim Tank jungler. Still not having a good time. So you might as well just go back to the Tui and at least have fun while you're losing. 100%. Not much happening across the map. I definitely think that this game is, for whatever reason, situated towards this Ramus pick. Uh, not fun at all here for Dilly either. He is looking at about a 30 CS lead right now. Uh, sorry, CS deficit rather versus this Kaisa. Q there from Karma, not going to be able to land. Henry really efficiently CSing right now, averaging 10 CS per minute. TP now coming out there from both solo lanes. Nice little kick there. Insect is able to take that resonating strike. Henry, how long will you live for? Dilly finally shuts him down. Dear God, that was clean and juicy. Smite now, Chilling Smite coming down in the mid lane. He will tag upon Jinso, reduces his movement speed. Toma is here though, just as a little bit of support there. Harold now going to be summoned as well in the mid lane, so they should be able to get this to crash before plates go down. Reef actually could taunt it. Oh, he's trying to proxy it. Not able to get it off quick enough. Does get that taunt, but it was mid-animation, so the animation does go through. Yeah, actually really well played by the team of ABD there. It seems like every person kind of had an idea of what they needed to do in that bot dive. The double TP, no one really stacking CC on top of each other. It meant that they were able to get both targets and no one was able to uh, get away. So pretty well played from them in order to secure those two extra kills. One of them going over to the side of Dilly. Kind of spreading the love around. And uh, I mean, at this point, you're up, you know, almost 2k gold. And you're going into these mid-game team fights with a Fed Ramus and a Fed Volibear and Lee Sin. It's going to be... It seems very difficult for the side of PDS to get anything to happen. It really is in the hands of Oriana and Kaisa. Oriana needs to hit some of those legendary, you know, three, four, five-man ults in order to make anything happen. And all... ABD has to do is really just not get Oriana ulted and they should be able to win these fights. 100%. It seems like there is a lot on stake. Sorry, lot, a lot at stake, rather. I don't know what's happening today. But 
Uh, yeah, very unfortunate stuff. I definitely think that the pace of this game will change here as we are looking at another dive. Shockwave going to be used, but it's a little too late for that. Toma looking to push Poseidon back into the tower. Does hit that Volley Bear into the wall, though. Not able to get off any damage there. Unkillable Volley at this point. Unkillable top. Uh, mid as well is just getting dumpstered here. Chilling Smite now coming down on top of Toma. Dragon Kick into a point blank resonating strike. Yeah. I mean, Jeremy at one of these points. PGS will be able to pick up a kill. They just need one. Yeah. They honestly should 2v2 bot lane. This is the one place where they can make something happen. Like, sure, Henry's getting ahead and farm, but you need more. The whole enemy team is super fed. You need to start farming Dilly and Kawhi. Get those kills into your pocket, and that's one of the main avenues you can make something happen. But instead, they're just opting to farm. And sure, you know, you're up 20, 30 CS on Dilly, but the rest of their team are just racking up kills on your mid and top winner. You're not going to be able to match that when it comes time to fight. I'm surprised uh, Henry has not been actually catching the Krugs either. As, you know, Toba has been looking around the map, the Krugs have, for the most part, been untouched whenever they are up. So whenever there was not a wave just shoving into him, he was freely able just to move around. You know, there is a huge threat right now of where exactly everyone is, so he's not able just to go out freely and push towards that mid-wave or anything like that. And he is actually opting in just to get waves continuously shoved in. Um, but nonetheless, he still could have at least looked to, to get the Krugs and try to you know reduce the gold deficit here as we do see yet another taunt matt absolutely not having fun at all does seem like he is building mercs though to reduce the duration of that taunt <laughs> really surprised if this is a pivot into a qss i'd be really mm -hmm. question questionable too it'd be extremely weird i'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt and say mercs <laughs> i would guess so I mean, I guess you're just trying to lower the duration of taunt, but honestly, at that point, I'm not sure what you could do. You just get so hard counterpicked, he has to focus someone else, and the rest of ABD is also so fed. Ooh, Lisa in here stepping a little far forward, has to use that ward. It's actually a big cooldown for him. As he doesn't have any pinks in inventory, so it's going to be a little bit harder for him to ward hop and make something happen. Kawhi here really egoing, trying to make this fight happen on Oh, two. wow. Two-man shockwave. Hecarim now into the back line as well with the ultimate. Kawhi are able just to take the whole team with this ult. Dilly does get the heal off, but at what cost? Oh my goodness. Look at Matt's health. Dilly now forced to flash over the wall. Jinso wants a little bit more. One more auto attack will do it. The speed up oh, that the ball does provide. Finally, he does go down to that dark sphere. Ramus is here. Oh my god. Ramus in the back line now, but it does seem like Toma is in a little bit of a pickle here. Penelope on the backside as well is able to get a lot of healing done from that gore drinker rave here just in the nick of time able to survive and able to steer his team out to victory 13 to 2 they're able just to get off those two kills that you wanted them to get Stu. but at what cost they go down yet again this time giving up three for two yeah and if you notice the only reason that pgs had a fighting chance in that fight and they still only traded even was the fact that rave was not there and as soon as rave right. was there triple kill to the side of abd so it really is tragic that uh, you pretty much can't play the game when Rave is around. So they really want to try and like maybe push or uh, into a side lane, force Rave to be there and try and make plays happen on the other side of the map. Because otherwise you can't really, you can't really fight these fights. The Rave is just here and the fight is unwinnable. Henry still leading Dilly in gold here, but the rest of the map not looking the same, not looking as nice for the side of PGS. There is a 5k gold difference right now when it comes to gold here uh, in terms of ABD's lead. It's just growing and growing and growing. And now with a Cloud Dragon Soul here, providing i believe it's that 13 uh ability haste here it's just gonna get very very dire for you if Kawhi star is able just to continuously live out throughout these fights or you know worst case scenario the dragon kick uh, sorry the dragon's rage does come up for penelope he's been able just to optimally use it continuously to either get the pick just secure these kills and then some right and now the gore drinker as well means that he is an impossible skirmisher to deal with 5 0 and 3 on this lee sin r5 yeah, I mean, the Lee Sin has really kind of proved its worth. It is a solo queue champion where it does need gold to get going, but once he got that first kill in the mid lane, he can just spam kill Orianna. She really can't say too much about it, especially with a volley where he's a jungler. It's like, all right, well, I will just ult the tower, and Orianna is not allowed to play the game. Right, understandable. And at that point, Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, at that point, you just kind of give up. But it does look like they're opting into maybe a 3v2 here in the bot lane, but Dilly and Kawhi should know better than to try and fight for this. 
Nice little Hecarim to disrupt that W from Kawhi Star. Kawhi Star looking for that E. Meanwhile, here, Rave in the mid lane does pop that ultimate. It's going to be the Tempest, actually, that does take it from Penelope. Not so much the um, immense amounts of damage from Rave or Poseidon. Yet another kill going over to Penelope in the mid lane. 14 to 2 at 18 minutes. Oh, Toma might be in a little bit of a bind here. The Dragon's Rage is still available here, but it does seem like Kelly is going to be the target here. Dilly with the Q! Ooh. Nice little flash over the wall to save. Rave is here, though, to collect it. <laughs> Unfortunate stuff. We'll go down to Rave's Q. Resonating Strike lands onto Matt yet again. That's going to be a 0 and 5 Ergot in the top lane. Definitely think first three bands next game are going to be this... Uh, it's probably going to be Skarner, Lee Sin, and uh, Ramus. I really don't think that anything else is as disruptive. Lee Sin is very good because it's still a huge flex here. Harold not going to be summoned as well in the mid lane. Tier 2 does go down. Look at the damage that they're doing onto Rave. Hardly anything. Toma going to be the target oh, yet again. Yeah, Taunt into Toma. He just got out of one of those 30 seconds ago. Last thing he remembered was dying. <laughs> and, uh, this game is just pain for the side of PGS. There's really not much you can do with the enemy team so fed. It is so hard. You really need to get one of these shutdowns, maybe try and catch right. an ambitious Penelope going for something crazy that he shouldn't be allowed to. Get that thousand gold and maybe see what happens from that. But honestly, at this point, I think the team comms may just be uh, so we're banning Ramus next game, right? A hundred percent. And I just want to remind everyone that PGS did win season three. I just wanna I just wanna throw that out there. They are the victors of season three. So with Terum. Oh, I knew you were going to say something like that. my boy Terum. I knew you were going to say something like that. Well, they were saying, you know, they're able just to overcome not having Terum this season. Obviously, you know, the rivalry is not there at all. They both mutually respect one another. But they really felt like having Henry on the side of PGS this time around rather than picking up Terum. Um, what's going to be beneficial for them? We could still see a reverse game here. It's going to take an absolute miracle, but it's not like they are down 10k at all. Ram is now going to be starting this initiation with the ultimate. They do get the taunt now down onto Henry. <laughs> as real ult will collect on two. Penelope is here as well. Resonating Strike will collect him. Oh my goodness, Ooh, Matt just whiffing that ultimate. Kawaisar into the nice two-man ultimate. Double kill now going over to the Lee Sin. Dragon's Rage still no available as well. Urgot is able to trade onto Kawaisar, but they're able just to get Toma for Penelope's triple kill here. Could be looking at a quadra. Dragon's Rage will <laughs> KS that kill ultimately. 11 0 and 3 We're seeing repeated TPs now, <laughs> repeated pigs. Oh, his TP got cancelled! He didn't want to TP onto a ward at all. Poseidon looking just down to chase down on top of this Ori, on top of Jinsoul here. No Penta for Penelope. Unfortunate stuff here on this R5 uh, Lee Sin. In the meantime, though, 20 to 3. Jeez. <laughs> You see a little bit of cheeky banter coming up from both teams in the all chat after that game. Uh, the side of PGS saying that they won that fight, actually. One kill and a tower. So, you know, really the map pressure is overwhelming for PGS right now. As ABD will pick up their third dragon here, getting up onto soul points. And honestly, they could probably hop on the Baron whenever they fancy, whenever they decide to uh, stop farming kills onto the side of PGS. I have legit no like game plan here i i think it's just really doomed for you i think it's more so a slow bleed than anything i feel like you know pgs got stabbed in that early game especially having their ergot go down three times consecutively to just ganks to just rave you know and now it does seem like they are too scared just to pull out that knife because they know that once they do more blood's gonna come out and so right now at this point at least to me it seems like a really slow bleed sure you have henry still again at a at a really high cs count i think it's like 9.6 cs per minute at this point um but at the same time you know it's really dire for you you had to deal with three just absolute tanky frontliners lee sin might not look as tanky as he is but still the gore drinker into the sustainability that the conqueror does provide it means that that guy is hardly oh, ever gonna no. go down here and i was talking about the zero and three ergot make it zero and seven here ward hop into the dragon's rage they don't want to mess around or play any games resonating strike lands on top of toma tempest not so much we are getting actually oh we get to become famous let's go yeah i was just about to say it does seem like we are getting a lot of fame here i think that the 21 to 3 score line for abd versus pgs is going to definitely be buying us those bots uh, i mean uh, followers <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, I think that's the most that we've ever banned anyone in this channel. We'll be Poseidon yeah. and the rest of ABD securing this Baron here at 23 minutes. I wonder what I mean, the comments honestly, are like. at this point, I mean, at ABD, you know, I know the guys in ABD, so I'd love to, but they are definitely hard clowning and saying how broken is Ramus and, you know, things along that line, so... And then PGOs are probably, I would assume, they're having a good time. These guys tend to take losses pretty well. And they're just trying to uh, keep their mental together for that next game. Because honestly, at this point in this game, I think you honestly look at it, and you look, and you see the 12-0 Lisa, the 5-0 Ramis, and you just start thinking about, all right, what are we going to do next game? Because in this one, I feel like it's almost certainly just doomed. Yeah, I really don't see an entry point for you at this point if you are PGS. Chinsu actually doing a fair bit of damage on top of Rave. Rave again having zero... Well, actually, I guess he does have that MR in his base kit. Uh, I believe he actually went the MR in the rune page. Dragon's Rage going to be used as well. Matt looking to actually turn the fight, but Resonating Strike does land. Kelly could go down here as well. Exhaust now going to be used on top of Dilly, who does have to flash forward with an auto attack to claim her life. Shockwave now going to collect Kawhi Star. Jinso really envious of this enemy team. He's like, oh my goodness, which team did I pick again? But it does <laughs> seem like, you know, Ray for the most part has uh, not that much MR, so they definitely could look for an angle on, uh, you know, Rave or just with this Orianna in general. I definitely don't think that they're going to be able to hinder or even touch this Volley Bear, but... You know, stranger things have happened. 10k goal lead at this point as well. I believe SKT overcame a 13 goal deficit at one point. It is certainly possible. And, you know, as much as I trust an ABD to not throw this game, it is also ABD. And they have thrown oh. games of similar calibers before. So I wouldn't put it in the realm of impossibility. More in the realm of improbable. See, it's funny you say that because even if they are put in an awkward 50-50 dragon dance around the Elder Dragon, which I guess at this point, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. ABD will be able to secure Soul at this point. There's just no stopping them. But in the event that, you know, Toma somehow is able to steal it or anyone else, I don't think it's going to be really that good because other than Jin Soul, hardly anyone is doing, you know, any damage. <laughs> like, no one is Very able true. just to bring them down below any type of threshold. I think at most, you're killing Rakan. And granted, Kawhi Star just immediately wanting to fight almost everything that moves in this game. Right? I've seen that guy just alt minion ways for that matter. He's just completely gung ho in this game, but it's going to be really tough oh, for no. PGS. Oh, Death Bush time, though. I mean, Elder Buff is really the only way you can go about it. You have to hope that A, you get Elder Buff, and B, the Stars Alliance, so that way ABD taking extended fights, so you can get that Elder oh Buff for his trailer at the top. Oh no, Kelly. Oh my god, what happened to Kelly? Holy smokes, I blinked, and now she is dead. Tempest Strike gonna, sorry, Resonating Strike, rather, gonna land, and that is gonna be a double kill going over to Dilly. Uh, Dilly Diff. It's one. <laughs> The Urga, they're having a little bit of uh, fun in the chat saying it's one as he pushes the tier 2 tower in the top lane. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> JBD will go for this soul. Yeah, I don't think that anything is going to come out of this. It does seem like ABD are going to be the first ones on the site of Dragon. Toma now immediately going to be opting in to clear that <laughs> tier 2 wave. Reap completely whips the ult, but look at Matt's health! What is he doing? He just goes down, he's taking the tower. Oh my god. <laughs> Matt's yeah, I think so that they're just... That tower. <laughs> he really wants that tier 2. I think if I was Rave, I would have just given him in. Like, yeah, yeah just I would have just sat there and just gave it to him. Oh my goodness. Even the empowered mantra cues are not doing anything to the wave here. Look at Penelope. Yeah, you can see, after there. Orianna did that little smidgen of damage to Rave, he ended up buying two no magic mantle straight away. So, oh, okay. <laughs> trying to stop any type of damage coming his way. Could be an insect uh, here. I would... Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way he doesn't take it, but it looks like he's a little scared. Empowered E now. They pop the Shirelias. Okay, they're looking. Oh, and they uh, had their opportunity to fight, and they lose it. Stu, <laughs> they wanted to go to base faster. You know, who can blame them? Why wait <laughs> out the seven-second back timer when you can immediately just run into the fountain here? Or got immediately going to be trying true. to catch the wave here mid. One and nine, but that doesn't stop his rising spirits. I mean, he does have that two item spike, which will help right. him out against people like Kawhi and Dilly, but you know, in this game, I'm not sure if two items will be enough for him. 
I'm surprised Penelope is not going for any insects here. He does have the normal ward available, so it seems like he is just, you know, biding his time, rather, looking for Henry. Um, but hardly any insects coming out from this mid to late game. We did see a couple towards that early game, especially when it did come to those bot interactions and the bot ganks. Uh, ABD loving just a four-man bot. We could look for a pick here onto Henry, who is walking a little bit far too forward. Hecarim now with the Q, immediately regretting it as he is damaging himself in the meantime. Yeah, we can see Rave here is still allowed to walk forward. They really can't stop this guy wherever he wants to go. He wants, and it's basically whenever ABD wants to pull the trigger, they can make the fight happen. Yeah, I it mean, looks like they're super scared for some reason, maybe trying to not into the way, but the fact that they're taking this fight so long means that PGS will have a chance. What is they're actually happening? running away with they a pop the Shirelias as well. And now they're immediately back on the offensive? I just... I'm not sure what's happening here. It seems like ABD doesn't realize uh... how much they are ahead. Yeah, they hit tab, someone hit tab, and they're like, wait a minute, we can just get it in him. Does seem like Baron is going to be the next objective here for ABD. Henry does yep, have the and... LDR though. Yeah, I mean, Henry's about to pick up his third item here, so it will be strong for him, but still, that Ramus Taunt is just going to be a huge problem. And yeah, I mean, at this point, you basically just hope that Rave and crew falls asleep at their keyboards and you can maybe sneak in a back door or something like that, because it is looking very difficult, as you know. I always say they are not getting triple capped for so long when their metal inhibitor will come back up and stop the super minions from spawning. And we do have Elder here spawning in 250, so uh, it's not admirable. Usually you like to have, you know, maybe two inhibitors up at the least. Preferably three when you want to try and go for these Elder Dragon steals, but all it takes is Rave to just... Rave and Penelope to TP into the base as they go for an Elder Dragon steal and just take the base. I just want to say right now, it does seem like despite... You know, losing right now by at least 11k, 26 kills to 3. This is such a crazy, crazy margin, and yet it is still only 30 minutes. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, it does seem like PGS do have the better CS scores. So, uh, mid getting Flame Horizon here versus the 13 <laughs> kill leaves it mid. So, I guess there's <laughs> your, you know, your winning point there. PGS can be like, you know what, at least we CS'd optimally. God, look at Kelly's health immediately popping everyone's oh, no. ult here. Dilly now with ult as well. Two-man shockwave into the back line. Nexus Tower 1 will go down. It does seem like Matt is going to be the target here, but oh. unfortunate stuff. The game just saying, you know, no fun, no fun. And it does seem like everyone was just about to die to rave. This is such a KDL type of moment here, the split shot. Uh, this is just a painting, right? This is ABD's win. Yeah, a painting. This is literally a beautiful painting right here. I'm yeah, not sure what it's... it is. I think it's with current patch. There's like some sort of spectator. It's not my client. It's not my client. Early. It's not my client. Yeah, because it's happening on my client as well. So I'm in here. Chat keeps thinking it's my client. I've repaired it at least twice. I promise it's not mine. Yeah, it's happening on my client as well. So I think it's an issue with current patch when people leave early. That's what I have heard thrown around from other people. But uh, whether or not that's true or not, we will come to see. But, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, Maybe PGS, you know, caught ABD sweeping and just went back over their base. But uh, I think we all know the more probable answer is that ABD did clean up that game. And that uh, will take the series with a strong lead and a 1-0 start. I don't know, Stu. You're you're saying it like it's a definite, right? I think that the Urgot actually got a Penta. He hit his 1-10 in 10 power spike. And, you know, I definitely think that it is completely winnable. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, the game client just didn't want to show us the rest of that match. Yeah, apparently the minions did end up ending, so a nice little uh, gentleman tan shake there from ABD to PGS. Oh, no no more bloodshed after <laughs> after breaking themselves on Rave's body so many times. Yeah, I definitely see that uh, Ramus being a first phase ban. There's just no way that they allow that to go through again. Yeah, I honestly would not be surprised to see, like, Ramus, Volibear, and then probably, I don't know, maybe uh, Seraphine for like their first three bands against ABD. I think Skarner, to be honest, because like Pasadena yeah. plays a lot of engage jungle right now, just utility jungle. Uh, I mean, we kind of heard Cam talk about it too in the winner's interview. Like the jungle meta is just completely oriented when it does come to, you know, those particular types of picks. 
And I would not be surprised to see the Skarner pick, to be honest. Or sorry, the Skarner ban, rather. Uh, and then, again, an insta lock-in here for Toma's uh, Hecarim. Fortunate stuff, though. It does seem like we are just waiting on confirmation uh, whether or not PGS are willing to run it back. They're actually going <laughs> to opt in here. I just got confirmation. They are actually going to be choosing blue side yet again. Thoughts? I mean, blue side is nice for them. I think the issue with that happened for them last time is that Jinx was banned away, so they just kind of AFK'd and picked that Kai'Sa. And while Kai'Sa can be a strong first pick, you can't just pick her and not have a plan around it. You do have to have a plan for what the enemy is going to pick into Kai'Sa and then how you're going to react to that. Because Kai'Sa is not as strong as she was maybe a few patches ago. In the meta, she does have some counters that were found out, and she does have a hard time into some of these matches like we see. You know, the enemy just picks Ramus, and uh, you just cry, as you can't really do damage. You, you just cry. Well, eloquently put there, we are going to be going into a little bit of a break here. Uh, but when we come back, we will be back with Game 2, PGS versus ABD. PGS, again, if you just missed it, are actually opting in to go blue side yet again. Um, but we'll talk to you guys in a bit.
All right, and we are back with our second match of the day. KDL PGS versus ABD for a potential third place finish for either of these teams. If you missed first game, don't worry. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can't find a bloodbath on YouTube. Um, but if you wanted to, you could check up on the page later today. That was absolutely phenomenal. I believe the final score was 28-3 to in favor of ABD. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, somewhere around there. I think once he gets to that kind of level, it doesn't really matter how many kills he has. I think just knowing that it was like a, a 9 to 1 ratio or something like that is uh, good enough. It's something crazy, something abysmal, as we said. Skarner on going to be banned here. Wow, they have a lot of faith in... Wow, are they going to just ban the Ramus later? Will be maybe they... If maybe they last ban... I would be very surprised if they left it open again, but maybe they have like an insane counter that we don't know about that they're looking to bait Rave into. Although really, Rave only really picks that because of the Urgot matchup, so maybe they just won't pick Urgot, and that way Ramus cannot be utilized in the top lane. We'll see what they be one here. Maybe it will be that Kai'Sa again. 100% they B1'd the Kai'Sa earlier. We could be looking at a B1 flex. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's a Tristana bot uh, or a Tristana mid for that matter. But very interesting B1. I w really would have thought that they wanted priority maybe on a Hecarim. It does seem like they are going to be banning out the Mundo on the side of ABD. So that kind of leads me into expect a Hecarim pick on their side. Just because Mundo is kind of one of those uh, champions that you absolutely dread if you are playing Hecarim. Yeah, and you know, I, it has took my mind until this point, but we do have Max, you know, the Mundo player. You know, this guy's Mundo is uh, pretty well known in the KDL sphere. A lot of people hate it, although Rave kind of shares the same champ pool as Matt, and he does play Mundo on occasion, so he should know what should be good into it. Maybe you can see another disgusting pocket pick like that, Ramus. But uh, I would assume something that goes a little bit more even into Mundo as they will kind of pick up this Rakan again. You know, I have to say, I don't really envy this early pick Rakan. I, Personally, is the way I play Rakan. I really hate picking him early because he has so mm -hmm. many counters that can be very obnoxious yeah. just to him and lane. But uh, Kawhi here, very confident, it just says, you know what? I really think that Kelly can't really do anything to my Rakan. So he's going to just kind of pick the ways that we'll pick up the server to follow it up, give that Rakan that extra speed. With uh, the Shreyla's as well, it can be very disgusting in these mid to late game team fights as Rakan just appears from the other side of the map into your lane and you really can't do much about it. Oh, 100%, and with that Lulu being banned on the side of PGS, they are going to be picking up the Karma yet again. So mobility for mobility, they didn't really have the perfect start. They're in the lane when it comes to drafting out this Karma. Uh, you said, you know, you had the Shirelius just to pop it alongside that Mantra E. It didn't really go the way that they wanted it, uh, you know, in that game one. We could be looking at a toss-up here. The Lilia going to be picked out this time around, though. Interesting, interesting. Hecarim still available as well. That more so is a matchup, or is a skill matchup more than anything. Yep, it will be interesting to see how it's going to go. Like the Karma into the Rakan, the way it should play out early is that Karma should be able to just kind of bully Rakan and force him into a low enough HP margin where you can't really do anything. Unfortunately, it didn't really go that way last game as oh, Kawhi wait, and the daily. Ooh, Morgana is open. I doubt ah, they would okay, pick it in. Okay, 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 okay. It will just be this Udyr Poseidon once again, put on Kim Tank duty and know your place as uh, they will pick up that Udyr. But interestingly, the Hecarim is still open, so they could opt into it. I would assume that ABD would ban it here in the second ban, or excuse me, as they do already have the way they won't be picking the Hecarim. But it was interesting that they kind of didn't go for it as Hecarim is just, you know, the jungler right now. He is pretty much picker ban in a lot of these games as we are waiting for the last ban to come out. Will be that Akali? I assume that's directed towards the mid lane, because from my knowledge, Matt does not pick up onto the champions like Akali, a little bit more of kind of a tank player like the Mundo and the Malphite. Oh, 100%. We are going to be looking at the Akali ban. Tenor is crying in chat. I can already hear it. The Zed now going to be answered as well for a nice little mid ban. Surprise, that does Zed. really point us towards that Tristana mid, mm -hmm. as that is one of her hard matchups. So they're really signaling where this Tristana is going to be going, and now ABD has a chance to kind of ban, you know, maybe an AD champion or either a top lane champion with their last remaining ban. It will be that Malphite. 
keeping it away from both Rave and Matt. And it'll be interesting to see if PGS here do ban another champion to protect this mid lane Tristana, or if they're going to opt to put a ban into the top lane. I realistically seen them trying to hinder Rave's champ pool a little bit more than, uh, you know, it already has been. They do have that flex of uh, Volley Bear being taken off the board there. And they will be banning out that Ramus <laughs> ultimately, so we could be looking at a run back for an Urgot potentially. Yeah, the Zyrgot is definitely open at this point. Uh, it seems like they may have been wanting to try and bait ABD into picking and maybe counter picking it, but at this point, it does appear that uh, they may be looking for it as Dilly here has to kind of blind pick his AD. We do have the last pick here for the side of, I would assume, Rave. They usually give Rave this kind of last pick, and it will be that good. It's just because oh, okay. if you have talked to Rave at all recently, he swears up and down that this champ is absolute trash. It is awful. It doesn't do anything. Whereas his mid laner has a little bit of a different opinion. So we'll see where it ends up going. It could go into the top or mid here. As now the side of PGS have to fill out their last remaining roster. With not showing or not really sure of who's going where on the side of ABD. They could pick away this Ezreal and take it away from Dewey. They will be doing so. Pantheon is really good here. I really like Pantheon or something else like a proxy, like a Cinch or a Trin into the Gwen pick towards topside. You alternatively could get away with a Riven or a Jax if you really want to do your best Exoria impression. I don't know if they really are going to be wanting to pick any of those four champions that I listed, but they still are available. Uh, Pantheon does win that matchup extremely hard versus the Gwen, but they actually want to opt in for the Ornn. They said we don't have enough AP damage as is. Lilia Karma, add an extra Ornn to it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the interesting thing for them as well is, you know, with this kind of team composition, it does... Oh, oh surely this okay. must be the Gwen top then, I would assume. Yeah. Rave is not really a huge fan of Vladimir from the experience I have with them. It looks like it will be shifting into that top lane. As they are just filling out the roles here. But the Vladimir is a spicy one. Uh, Penelope not too renowned for his Vladimir. And it looks like it will be lining up into that Gwen top lane and the Vladimir mid lane. Maybe he's taking some notes from uh, Superstar top lane or Exera. And uh, trying to get some tips that way. But we will see how it goes. Just from what I understand, it can be very hard for Vladimir in these early levels with Tristana's ability to just kind of poke out and bully out anyone into this mid lane. But as the game goes on longer, as long as Penelope is able to keep up farming and keep some CS and get to mid game at a reasonable point, he should be able to do a lot. Whereas Orin will help this team. It'll be interesting to see which mythic he goes. I know a lot of people kind of tend to go for this AFK Frostfire mythic, but honestly, I do not think Locket would be that bad here, considering Vladimir and Gwen want to burst down your entire team, so it'll be something to watch out for. For sure, for sure. And speaking of watching out for it, we will be coming to you uh, right after this three-minute delay here. It's not on our end, it's Riots, I promise. But what an exciting game, too. Like you said, there's a lot to keep your eye on, and hopefully you can join us here after the three minutes. We'll talk to you just in a little bit.
All right, and welcome back to the KDL. You are watching Game 2, set between PGS and ABD. If you are just joining us and unfortunately did skip out on that draft, we are going to be having an immediate run back, PGS on blue side versus ABD on red. Very exciting stuff. We do have our first Gwen pick, though, of the season, coming to the way of Rave in the top side for ABD. And it will be answered by an Orn. I'm not quite sure the stats behind that. I'm sure Tanner can tell me. But I'm really, really excited. We have seen Dilly perform excellently well on the Sivir pick before. And almost every single person who has played with Dilly raves on about him. So let's see how this game goes on. We have loaded into the game right now. I believe Stu is just a little bit, uh, you know, AFK right now grabbing a drink. So unfortunately, you will be stuck with me for now. Uh, hopefully not too, uh, you know, late of a duration at that. But we will be loaded in here, both sides, just really, really wanting to get to a game three. I definitely think that despite ABD wanting to 2-0 have that kind of perfect third place finish record, I definitely think that they really want to get through and want to, uh, you know, get a game three. Because I think everyone wants the silver scrapes, including the potential winners. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, does make it... Dilly a sad guy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> ABD may not, you know, want to uh, throw one game in order to get that Queen 2-0 finish, but come on, for the fans, give us this three-game series. Oh, 100%, and I definitely think that, you know, Rave is thinking to himself, how can I show off that I'm the best top laner? I purposely hard smurf, and then I just throw the top lane, and then we just force out a game three. Like, that is just... He gets two, pl he gets two games on Gwyn that way. Like, it's just perfect. It's literally perfect. There's no opposition Yeah, absolutely. Here. And, you know, while we're talking about, you know, some star players and the way that they have performed in the season, we do oh, currently have All-Stars voting going on. If you go ahead and check in our Discord, and I'll post the link here in our chat, you can go ahead and vote for who you think did the best in the role this season. It was one player carrying their team to a strong finish, or one player who was just clearly better than the rest of them. You can go ahead and take a vote in that All-Stars when we'll be having a show match in a round you know, two or so weeks, I want to say roughly a little bit after finals, you should be able to expect it to come out. Can you give hints on who is leading? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I will give one hint because I Ooh, think exclusive. most people can guess. Uh, for the top laner, the number one top laner is Exer by a large margin. Around 60% really? of people voted for him. I'm actually surprised because, and I'm not sure if I can say it, but I actually voted for uh, the top laner of INS. And so I really thought that he was the front runner. That's very, very, you know, exciting stuff. Mantra Q going to be landed on top of the wave. Henry repeatedly pinging Kelly here saying, what on earth? Why did you just mess up my wave? <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to see that all-star Orn. I, I mean, it's not out of the question for the number two person to uh, bring oh, that Orn to the all-stars. I won't leak anything going forward, but Gwen here taking a little quick trade. That uh, looked absolutely disgusting. Man, I can't wait for Code versus Majestic in the bot lane, because that's obviously <laughs> that's obviously it, right? That's obviously it. It, it may be. Yeah, who knows, who knows. We could actually have Penelope, uh, Persephone, Kelly, and Majestic just all play on one team, and it would just be, <laughs> you know, a girls versus boys. You know, here in the KDL, we are all for equality. We're actually really low here. He's going to be forced to pop a potion here in a second. Matt could look Ooh, for an efficient trade. Yeah, unfortunate stuff for sure. No true damage to be had on top of that Orn. 
Nice little uh... E there coming out for Penelope. Actually, the dive forward. This is so smart. Jin, so such easy, such precision, such, uh, you know, a nice little first blood there. I don't know where I was going with that one, but that is going to be first blood nonetheless. Game two here on the side of PGS this time around. Yeah, a little bit of ego from Penelope there. Maybe thinking he was still back in that Lee Sin game. You really can't disrespect Tristana's early game. And now that she has a kill on you, it gets even worse. So it's going to be interesting to see how he plays this lane. Surely if he doesn't bleed anymore, it will be manageable for him. As that trade is absolutely disgusting. What is that champion? Wow. Just cues him for half his HP bar. What is that? I think Rave is regretting not picking Maokai here. Oh my god, and he's just going to go oh. down there. Brittle not even proc. That was just the East splash. Wow. Uh, it seems like... Both members of ABD here still think they're in that last game. We have that huge Yeah, advantage. 100%. 100%. I don't think that was an efficient trade there in terms of mana for Kawhi. Oh, immediate TP now from Rave trying to equalize, you know, this uh, top lane at least. Huge wave though for him as well. Yeah, think... Rave will be able to pick up a CS lead, but unfortunately for him, Orin did pick up that kill. So, you know, if you have to trade a kill or like 10 or so CS, I think he takes the kill any day of the week. As Orin is even still in the wave, trying to push it out. Unfortunately for him, you know, his jungler is bot side. But also, fortunately for him, ABD's jungler is bot side as well. As Rave is getting, just getting chunked out here. Already back to the same HP as Orin. Oh, and he might get killed again. Yeah, for sure, Rave does have the flash <laughs> available. He actually just goes down to the flame breath. No flash needed. The brittle, again, wasn't even proc'd. Jinsel now Wing forward there. That is the rocket jump. There is no refresh for the rocket jump because there is no satchel charge. But unfortunate stuff there for Rave. Uh, so it seems like, you know, I think Rave is flipping the script. Uh, Matt was down 0-3 this time around. Rave is like, you know what? I'll be the top lane. I'll be weak side this game. Yeah, it does seem like ABD kind of took what we said to heart. You know, when we wanted a game three, we didn't want it to go like this. You know, at least put up a fighting chance. Because right now it is looking like an absolute stomp for PGS. Oh! Okay, oh. beside an immediate bear flash puts Jensel in his place. That is going to be his first death of the game. 2-1 start, <laughs> though, for Tristana with about 20 CS up. I don't think yeah. that he's crying over anything like that. I mean... I just thought I took it well as well. You know, as soon as she, or as soon as Jen so flashed the immediate LOL in all chat to let everyone know that she fucked up. So, at least she's taking it well, and we maybe hope to see oh, it going a little bit easier for Vlad. He does have that Seeker's Arm Guard coming out, so it will help him in these trades. But Tristana here coming back with the Noon Quiver and the Cult. It's going to be uh, an uphill road for sure. It is definitely an uphill battle at this point. It's also silken serial, though, when it comes to that mid lane. 2-1, 46 CS again. Now leading, uh, you know, Penelope by 20 CS. It's not looking very, very good for him. He really wants the initiation here. Immediately forced to pool as well. Pool does take out about, I believe it's 15% of HP. I'm not quite sure. But nonetheless, it does use up the HP, and it's not looking too good for him, especially after that satchel charge trade from Tristana. Yeah, it is definitely rough, and I mean, as you're coming into this kind of... Oh, just hold that thought, though. Oh. There is an initiation here. No pool to be had because oh. he used it prior. He pops the ultimate, but no Q as well. Ah, so I guess ABD really do want to go to game three. Yeah, and this is kind of what happens to ABD sometimes when they do fall behind in these lanes. They really don't respect the fact that they are behind. And you see there, he's trying to go for one for one trade, but you're down 20 CS, almost 30. And you're down three or two kills at that point, excuse me. It's just not really something you can trade into. But ABD, you know, showing a little bit of their weakness here as PDS had a very weak showing in the first game, but coming back a lot stronger into the second one. All they really need to do is carry out this gold lead into the mid game, try and convert it into objectives, and uh, hopefully try and end this game before Vladimir doesn't end up scaling. Ooh, as, you know. that Q. I mean, it happens to the best of us, I guess. Henry uh, <laughs> maybe still a little bit sh shook from that last game. Uh, it's because he doesn't have the grasp. Oh, that's absolutely true. Yeah, it's because Although there I is do no respect Henry. Well. You know, Henry and I talked about some Ezreal skins. You know, he does not have a very high opinion of SSG, but you know, oh, for okay. me, he does pick it, pick up that skin for me. So I respect. You know, I'm not going to blame him too hard for it. I think my favorite skin right now in League is the Withered Rose Syndra. It's just such a beautiful skin, like. I don't know. I also feel like it's pay to win. You just can't see the Dark Spheres. Nonetheless, we don't have a Cinder in this game, but 
you know, I am being paid on commission to actually promote that skin. So if you can, please pick it up. <laughs> Raven actually oh, forced a flash away from uh, Orn Q. Uh, I don't think Call of the Forge God was really going to be casted there. I'm not quite sure when it comes to the interaction, actually, between Gwen's W and Call of the Forge God. I don't believe that she actually takes damage from it, but she does get knocked up. Yeah, she doesn't take damage from it or get knocked up. She's just oh, completely she immune okay. to everything. Yeah. Gwen's uh, W is a really balanced ability. As Udyr is coming here for some uh, balanced lane gameplay. One Q and Press she's dead. Yeah, oh. I mean... I'm not really sure what he was expecting here. Poseidon looking to maximize Maybe this Maybe he's able to get well. out. We do have we Toma coming looking, up here. We could oh, be he looking at a lot much. here. Call the Forge God going to be casted here by Matt. He's able to connect on top of Poseidon. Toma again here. He is hovering on that control ward. Lilting Lullaby is available here for him on this Lilia pickup. Jinsoul really greeting out for that plate. Gold is not able to get it, but does get that maximum satchel charge proc. Yeah, something that Jinso could potentially look into once he finishes his Mythic here is a Vamp Scepter. Just the amount of free hitting he's able to do onto Penelope before he can really get that empowered Q in will mean that he's going to get a lot of value out of any kind of lifesteal. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it come out of him here soon. As uh, you know, it is 9 minutes into the game and he has 1 plate left on his tier 1 tower with no Herald used in the mid lane. And he did disconnect. I assume that's for his ping. Yeah, it will be a Penelope DC. All right, and as always, we actually will be switching over to another screen to maintain the game integrity, but it's not looking too hot here. I'm looking at a still frame of Poseidon just chasing down Jinsoul. There is no flash for this Tristana. Probably Rocket Jump is available. Uh, Buster Shot is available as well just to push him back. Yeah, 6-1 uh, start here for PGS versus this ABD squad. ABD had all of their fun in that last game. They had 28 kills to 3. And this game around, it does seem like, you know, they kind of are flexing out on top of some of these picks. I definitely don't think that the Gwen nor is the Vladimir pick working, uh, you know, the way that they wanted. But luckily for them, they do have Poseidon, who actually is CSing at about a 10 CS per minute mark as well on this Udyr pick. Yeah, I mean, Poseidon, the notorious full clearer. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a joke there, but Poseidon does really keep up well on this farm whenever he does play jungle he always makes sure he's matching and even pulling ahead of other junglers you can see he's up around 30 cs on toma well you can't see but i will tell you he's around up 30 cs on toma because toma has been really hovering these lanes trying to make sure udir isn't coming and really udir has just been kind of farming away and with that kind of advantage maybe you can hope to impact the lane in the mid game but as it is right now it's not looking too terribly great for the side of abd you know all of these lanes are down CS besides this Udyr, who is up that 30 CS, like I mentioned, but every other way. Mm -hmm. Down CS, the top and mid are down kills, and Henry here slowly pulling ahead of Henry, having a little bit of difficulty doing so, but he is up around 10 CS now, so. Uh, it is not looking. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that'll be right. So, you know, it's not looking great for ABD, but this is the kind of ABD classic they are. They do tend to fall behind in that early game CS and those early game plays. And because of it, they do tend to struggle a little bit into these mid-games, but somehow they always manage to have greater team fight. They really position well with their macro and making plays happen around the map. Mm -hmm. And with that, they're able to catch back up in gold. So there's something to look out for. You know, they are bleeding now, but they will be able to stem it in the future. Right. And they should be able to bring their macro into some potential picks coming into this mid-game. I mean, like you said, their comp just absolutely hard skills. They have the Vlad, they have the Gwen. Now it's just a means of getting enough gold to actually snowball it into, again, that midpoint, that end point. And now when we talk about the CS lead, we really have to look at it. And again, chat can't see. But there's a 35 CS lead, like you said, when it comes to Jin Sol's Tristana. He might have not had the best, you know, start to the day. But speaking about Jin Sol, I do want to give a quick shout out here. Awkward transition, but I want to give a quick shout out here to Jin Soy, um, the support player for Never Lose. It is actually his 43rd birthday today. So happy birthday, Jin Soy. <laughs> Yeah, believe it. Oh, or not. happy birthday! Yeah, we got 43rd. a little boomer the big, in here. The big four three. Yeah, that's why he just does not talk during uh, during the interviews. Poor guy is actually napping. It's a uh, it's a midday snooze. You know, he has to. <laughs> he gets off work and he's like, "Geez, I had to play League." He was a wee little lad when League actually released, and uh, he's been playing <laughs> since. So shout out to Jin Soy. I'm the youngest on the team. I think Code is about like 50 <laughs> yeah, or something. 
Beedoof is probably true. like in his like late fifties. I think so. That's true. Code is an old man. I did play a couple games with him, and I was honestly surprised that one man could react so quickly with his boomer age. Right. So. I was just about to say, Faker did say in an interview, and Teddy as well, kind of reinforcing it that age does not matter. Uh, when it comes to league and i guess code is that true warrior of it but now we are back into the game we might have been talking about jin soy but we are looking at the real jin soul 100 percent real actually from luna as well it is her playing kawaii star now scouting out on top of this try for a pink ward kelly is here henry now rotating as well poseidon is on the other way q from ezreal not going to be able to land there Yeah, and you see Kawhi there. He's really doing this thing that I actually love it when he does, does this, and I hope he would do it more. You really try and catch the enemy slipping. Sure, you're behind in bot lane, and you can realistically never win that 2v2 at that pink court. But if they don't react fast enough, you can just steal it. And you can do a lot of things like that on Rakan. He lets you cheat with his mobility a lot of the time, and you can punish teams who are not being vigilant about their vision. Oh, 100%. And it really seems like, you know, as opposed to last game where ABD was in the driver's seat and nothing else was happening around the map uh, when it came to PGS, PGS are really allowing a lot when it comes to Poseidon. Granted, they just immediately proved me wrong by uh, taking out that mid tower. But at the same time, they lose that first ocean. It is going to be an infernal second, so we could be looking at a mountain or a cloud for that matter. Nice little arcane shift right outside of the range of that Rakan's W. But yeah, I'm... Uh... I'm really looking forward to how PGS is going to be able oh, to snowball. No. Oh, wow. A triple oh, dive. No. Toma misses the wall there. Oh, geez. And then he pops the sweepers out of embarrassment, I guess. Oh, yeah. this is second tower, though. Guaranteed. <laughs> it will be just that second tower taken away. And Toma there, even though he misplaced the Herald, still does get the gold. And Tristana will get some as well. So a lot of gold being funneled onto this Orin and onto this Tristana. And for the side of PGS, that's really what you want to see. Kawhi here... It really looks like he's kind of running it down, trying to hit these Ws and make something happen. But really, if he hits anything, he can really realistically force the flash or some other kind of summoner spell out of these players. So he's just fishing and fishing until he can get something to come up. And like I said here, you can see PGS not really vigilant about their vision. They just lose that pink ward because of it. See, to your point of trying to fish out for some of these sums, some of these expert cooldowns, I was actually expecting him to just proc that Rakan ult just to force out the flash or a heal or even an exhaust coming up from Kelly um, when he did miss that W, but there will be no such trade. I really feel like the story of both of these bot lanes for the most part, at least in this series, you know, as opposed to the regular season or their prior playoff runs, has been, you know, they really want to get stuff done towards the top side, towards the mid lane, and then it tr slowly transitions down into the bot lane. We have seen a lot of teams start out from the bot and then transition, sorry, transition upwards. Um, but for this series, at least, it really seems like we are going from like a top to bot type of play style. And I'm not really, you know, I'm not really one for it because I really like the playmaking potential that supports really have right now in the meta. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, Kawhi are not able to get much oh, done. No. And speaking about getting stuff done towards the top side, Rave yet again is going to be the target of an onslaught here. This time around, it is going to be Matt who takes it. Dilly, one HP in the back line. Kelly will surely go down here. She does flush Ooh. out, but not before the potential burn there just does take her down. Poseidon picks up one kill on top of Kelly. Could be looking to make it double trouble here. Kawhi Star now going to Ooh. join his brother underneath the tower. Not quite able to get that kill onto Henry ultimately. Henry forced to flash and heal, though. And sure, I mean, if you're ABD, you kind of take this trade as this is the start of what we need to get started snowballing. You got two kills onto the Uter. He is run stun job done, so we'll be able to just run down many people of PGS. But it is still going to be very hard for them. You know, they don't get this tower. And in the top point, you had Tristan and Orn there pushing for the tier two. And they ended up getting that as well. And here you can see them sitting on the red buff, potentially looking to catch out Udyr, trying to catch out someone here. And if not, then Tristana will just steal the entire jungle. Oh, oh no. And it does seem like Poseidon will be going down. Oh my goodness. Going downtown, Rave now pushed a little bit far too forward, assuming that he had a tier 2 there, but there is no tier 2 to be had. Kawhi Star now here as well for the extra support. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, the duty really is on Kawhi Star and Poseidon. They need to get into one of these side lanes or in the mid lane and make a play happen. They have to get kills. They have to stop the bleeding here because if they really can't stop the Tristana and Orn, Orn will just hyperscale into the point where he can start upgrading his teammates. And even in bot lane where it's sort of even, 
it's just going to become unbearable with the Orn upgrades, and it's going to be very hard for him. And with this Turbo Kim taking, you can see him leashing the Raptors as well. <laughs> Tristana here is just going to hop on top of Sivir and just absolutely destroy her, and it's just going to be painful to watch. 100% here. It's not looking very good right now for the side of ABD. Poseidon is trying to make his way downtown right now for a bot little gank. Dragon is going to be spawning within the next 40 seconds, though, and this is going to be really important for ABD for that matter if they really want to set up for a potential soul point. Uh, you know, two dragons up is not a bad look at all. Poseidon now here in the bush looking for an engage here. Kawhi Star really wanted to go forward. We'll get spotted out on that normal bush in the river. Rave does yeah, you can TV. see... Sorry, go ahead. You can... You can see the top and mid here and the jungle, just the entire PGS team saying, hey, you know, ABD has one dragon, let's not let them get two. And the entire team is rotating down here and you see Gwen in the top one, she does have the TP available, same with the Vladimir. But ultimately at this point, they have Kim Tank, they have Mantra E on top of this Karma. It is going to be very hard for ABD to run away from this team. I wouldn't be surprised if this just goes away in no contest. Five members right now of PGS Strong just hovering this dragon right now. I don't think that there's much that you can do. Now, Orn is just puppy guarding the dragon pit as well. And that will be the first dragon, I believe, of the series for PGS this time around. And it is going to be that Infernal, which does really, you know, kind of spell disaster for you if you are Lilia, if you are, or sorry, if you are going up against Lilia, if you are going up against Tristana because of the added bonus uh, that they do get in terms of that damage. Questar could look to engage here in the bot lane. They've been playing really passively. I mean, you, you touched upon it earlier, right? Just trading out for those sums, trading out for those cooldowns. But for the most part, they really have not been playing aggressively. It's sort of the play style that we've come to know from this bot lane of ABD. Yeah, and the sad thing is, is they really can't at this point. Ezreal has Essence Reaver. Silver has his Mana Moon and sure it is stacking, but it's not strong enough as Udyr is coming into this mid lane here. And surely the ultimate will just come out to force him away. And never mind, it is just the E and she will jump away. That just was really smart. Extremely balanced. That was really smart coming out from the real Jin Soul. Um, they used the Satchel Charge there oh, to no. initiate. Call the Forge God now. Going to catch actually Poseidon out. Remember that Buster Shot is still available. Satchel Charge, flash forward from Tristana. One more auto attack. Could be looking at a Trist Insect here. Rocket Jump is still available for her. Buster Shot into oh. an auto attack equals double trouble done? for her. No, she's alive. No. Oh my god, that did no damage. My mistake. Yeah, Night Harvester, if he had Night Harvester, maybe. But other than that, like, no, not even close. Man, this is so unfortunate if you are ABD right now. You are losing so much around the map. You're going to lose a tier 1 in the bot side. Uh, sorry, in the bot lane, which would mean that you're just pushed to tier 2s across the map. And then you're losing yet another Herald here. This is going to be second Herald of the game. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of the flip-flop of what happened last game. You know, last game, ABD looked unstoppable. Oh. They actually finally do get their first target at the Rakan W, but it immediately is answered with an Arcane Shift. It's an... Yeah, I mean, at this point, Rakan, he really needs someone else here. You need Udyr here, you need Gwyn here, mm -hmm. you need Vladimir here. Otherwise, Henry, you know, he's a smart player. He's not just going to flash away because Rakan W is onto him. Silver does not have enough damage to just one-shot him with through Karma shielding. So he's just going to play it smart and make sure that... You know, he doesn't waste any sums unnecessarily, and they really have to bring someone down. And the issue that brings with, you know, if Udyr is down in the bot lane, that is more time he's not spending farming, and the same goes for Vladimir and Gwen. And the nice thing that you have on the side of ABD is you do have this scaling composition. Gwen, uh, although very recent, is sort of being found out to be a scaling champion. She doesn't exactly hard scale on the lines of Cassidy. But she does get a lot better as the time goes on, and with a skilled player, her W can be damn near unbeatable. And Vladimir, as we are all aware, is just a disgusting scaling champion. So that will be something that, you know, they have going for them, but they do have to get into that late game. And, and as it looks at this point, you know, PGS are just kind of looking to close this game out. 100%, and I don't think that there is any opposition to that. Second Herald not going to be spawned within the bounds of a Tier 2. Just look at how much damage they're doing to the Tier 2 already. Matt now forced to pop that call. The Forge God Poseidon is here as well. Immediate flash by both ABD laners. Or sorry, not laners, but players rather. Double flash coming out. Rave actually flashed, but no kill. That is so unfortunate for him. Poseidon finally able to just to take down this Orn. Is able to get a nice little shutdown to himself, but... Will this Udyr be enough to just face this Tristana late game? I, I really don't think so at this point. Oh my god. Yeah, I really don't think so. 
with that, you know, she has Karma backing her up, and she does have the ultimate to just force Udyr away if he ever tries to get on top of her. So I really think it is very hard for them. And all Orn has to do, you know, he got caught out there being a little greedy, trying to push an additional wave when he really didn't need to. And sure, he hands over that shutdown, but it went over to Udyr, who again is stacking all the gold on ABD, and that's really not, you know, that's not who you want the gold on top of. Like, sure, run stun job done, and you can try and make something happen. Oh, okay, as the force engage is coming out, Jinsoul does not have flash. No one is here for him. This could be the... T okay, that is actually a huge shutdown. Wow, for that ABD. is really good there, especially on Dilly. Uh, you know, Dilly has not died yet. The bot lane, to be fair, has not seen a lot of action, but Dilly now just taking a huge chunk of change for himself as well. They actually could stop the back here. Whoa, my God, the arcane shift because of how it works. It's actually an auto attack, which will hit Dilly here. But I'm surprised he just didn't want to fire off the Q. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if he Qs, then Sivir can just spell shield, I believe, and just walk away. I mean, granted, she still has to stay in the lane, though, at most. She's not going to be able just to yeah. immediately back. But, oh, wow, they actually are not able to deny that back at all. Second, or sorry, third dragon of the game now going to be spawning up. This is going to be a mountain soul. So really fun stuff if you are PGS and you're looking at your Orn and you're like, you know what? Maybe today is the day that you're just super unkillable here. Rave now down here as well. Penelope on the Vladimir pickup. Not really doing much right now, but could be looking to do a lot here in this next team fight. Mantra Q will tag upon Kawhi Star. Matt looking to zone off everyone with this bulky Orn pick. Beside it now looking to take out Gromp for some healing for a little bit extra XP when it comes to trying to outsmite the enemy jungle. He has two levels up on top of Toma though. Yeah, no yeah, opposition we again. Yeah, see, ABD just kind of notionally walks over here like, hey guys, we could be fighting this. And, you know, if any LS fans in chat, you know, it's one of the things that he just kind of mulls over where if you're just going to give the objective, just give it. Don't walk over there and watch them do it. Do something else on the map. And then it's unfortunate that they're not really able to do much, but they need to recognize that they really can't fight these fights. And especially with these upgrades coming through, you can see Orin pitch purchased that first upgrade. I do believe it is the turbocharged hex experiment. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. Not gonna oh. lie. <laughs> oh, jeez, like, that was a mouthful. You want to say it again? Yeah. Turbocharged hex experiment. You know, there they really go. tried to put as many syllables in that as possible. There you go. They're just trying <laughs> to maximize the casters. They're like, shoot, we paid them how much money to say how many words? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, we'll be seeing, you know, just ABD just kind of suffer here in the mid lane as they are trying to stack up and defend this as Penelope again is having ping issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunate stuff for Penelope, for sure. We will be switching off yet again to our secondary screen. Um, 0 4 one right now on this Vladimir when we are talking about Penelope. He's not having that breakout game that he did have on that Lee Sin. Um, he's trying right now just to claw his way back in, but if you are ABD and you're kind of just constantly pushed back, I don't really think that there is a lot of, you know, space here for you to claw back into this game. Granted, your champion is amazing late, but I really feel like if you're going to funnel anyone to come back and overcome this deficit, it definitely needs to be Dilly, and it needs to be Dilly fast. Dilly still, again, has not died yet. He is not too far off when it comes to CS diff versus Henry. He is only down 10 CS. He actually is leading the lane here when it does come to kills as well, but... Unfortunate stuff nonetheless here if you are ABD. There's not a lot that you can do in this circumstance. Yeah, I mean, the fortunate thing ABD does have going for them is I touched on that scaling composition, but I didn't mention Dilly. You know, Silver can be an obnoxious pick at times because when she is even or even ahead in gold as she is right now versus her lane opponent, she can just kind of sit under top, delete these waves, kind of chew them up or give them to her other laners and stall the game out. And what ABD does need is time. So if they're able to stall these games out, they can get pen money onto Penelope and money on the Rave and get these kind of scaling champions going. But they really need to hard play around Dilly at this point. It needs to be Dilly and Pen or not Penelope, Poseidon, running around, making fights happen with that Sivir ultimate. And just trying to get gold where they can get it. You know, they had some signs of life in that mid game where they were able to pick up a kill onto that Karma and onto the Tristana as well. And they need to make more things like that happen because if they just keep stalling the game out like this, PGS are just going to be able to take Baron and then their Siege is strong enough with Tristana with Ezreal that they're not going to be able to stop them from ending the game. 100% we actually do have Penelope reconnecting right now. I think that he did reconnect. Um, but now it's just a means of controlling his ping. 
Yeah. yeah, unfortunately for Ping, or for Penelope, it is a bit of a Ping, ping. deck sometimes. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for Ping, he does have Penelope. <laughs> yeah, true. Not much happening, though. I definitely agree on a lot of those points. Uh, it's going to be really tough for ABD to overcome this. A slight gold deficit. Again, it is only, as you said, 5k at this point. It's nothing too drastic like last game. Um, but I definitely think that the longer this game goes out, the more difficult it is for ABD to end, especially knowing that Orn is in such a nice little comfortable position, especially with all the resistances, with the sustainability, with the tank ability, everything like that. It just becomes more and more difficult for uh, ABD to deal with. But speaking of, you know, ABD, we are going to be looking at the chat here, and it does seem like they are wishing, or sorry, it does seem like Kelly is wishing, rather, uh, Jin Soy a happy birthday as well in this all chat. So it's not just us. Henry yeah, I wish it might Kelly. have been aware. We can see the R question mark coming out from ABD. So whenever PGS is ready, we'll be getting back into this game. And we'll take, they have responded, they are ready. So we should be getting back into here shortly. While we're here, I'll go ahead and plug the All-Stars. Let me go ahead and get the link that I got from last time. You know, if you want to vote on a player who you think did the best in the role, maybe you want to vote for someone like Exoria, you know, the renowned super top, or maybe Code Phoenix, you know, the ADC menace. You can vote for either of those players and try and see them into this All-Star match that will be happening here in a few weeks. If have you don't question. have the link... What happens if I want to vote for the statistical genius uh, tenor? What happens about uh, if you want to vote for Tanner? I think it might just kick you out of the forums. I wouldn't bother oh, doing it. Oh, jeez, it's just an automatic fail safe, I guess. Yeah, you know, he may be a statistical freak, but the man can only play ping pong, as we do see, you know, into this bot lane. Tristana hopping on top of this Gwyn. And, you know, things going as about as much as you would expect from a 5 and 2 Tristana versus an 0 and 4 Gwyn. You know, she did have her moment of brilliance there with that W and denying a lot of damage and regenerating a lot through her ultimate. But unfortunately for her, she still will go down all the same. Oh my goodness, I'm looking at the responses right now for the All-Star voting, and I can't believe that player got voted. Oh my god, it's actually crazy. There's so yes. many players. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't believe that specific player might be going to All-Stars. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jeez, so I hope crazy. I'm not leaking anything, dude. Oh my god. That player from this team? Like, just crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, you know, some of the results are kind of crazy, and we'll be seeing, you know, who comes out on top in a little bit here. You know, the voting will remain open until the finals end, so look forward to that. You know, start, or not start, as you said, it's a little bit of PTSD there. Uh, Survey Corps. That's, you know what's funny? Really... Every single person who has casted Survey Core games, they constantly are saying SDC. And I almost remember when SDC was playing, we never said SDC. We always said Fromis X twice or something. It's a very yeah. weird system. We're always calling Tanner's team whatever iteration that they're not. I don't believe that he played on a team from start to finish in Season 3. I believe that he subbed in for AD Carry Gober. Uh, they did get knocked out of playoffs, though, when he did sub in. Yeah, unfortunately, the statistical freak was not able to bust out the stats of that season, but he has had a better season this season. But let's focus more on ABD versus this PGS game. As PGS are posing around the Baron, really inviting ABD to come in and trying to get their vision out, as it looks like they are just going to go ahead and hop on it. 100% Baron is going to be the target here. ABD are fully aware that this is happening. Gwen is now split pushing as well, but there is a TP to be had for Rave here. This could be a really big game changer here if ABD are able to seal this away. We've seen Poseidon do it before. He has the flash available. Oh, he's right over the pit. They're just going to finish it. Oh my god. And they're able just to steal it. Or sorry, confirm and uh, just secure it here. Kawhi are now going to be the first member to die. Lilting Lullaby in the back line. Going for two. Penelope's too quick to die before it actually does go down. It's Dilly versus the world. Jin Sol now flash immediately right into the face of Dilly just to say hi and give him a little peck on the cheek. But that's all that he's going to get. The Buster Shop, believe it or not, actually saved Poseidon. Poseidon flashed in. There was no escape. 
And Dilly said, you know what? Or sorry, Jinsel rather said, you know what? Here's an out. I want you to survive to see another day. They're not able to get the Baron. They sacrificed three of their members for it. They sacrificed so many sums, so many alts for that matter. And all they get is a push here on the tier two for the side of ABD. I don't really think that was a, uh, that was worth at all. And Poseidon walking a little bit far too forward. Kawaisar and Rave are the only ones now able to survive and potentially hold off this onslaught versus Baron empowered minions. It's not looking too good for them, but now Dilly has respawned as well. Yeah, and PGS will be going here towards this bot inhibitor. They really should be able to get this without any sort of problem. It is 4v3, but it is also your super fetch oh. as the Silver Ultimate goes through. Silver Ultimate does go down. They are able to get the two-man knockup, but look at Rave just get deleted. What on earth happened to Dilly? Oh my god, I blinked. What happened to Dilly's HP? He actually just got shredded from the buster shot. They're saying from the satchel charge that was on top of Penelope. And he immediately just gets one shot here. Matt now TPing on the minion trying to save the wave here. But I don't think that uh, it really matters. We are going to game three, baby. Load up the silver scrapes. PGS said, you know what? We've woken. We are awake. And as I just say that, the client actually dies. It commits seppuku. But they are going to game three. Yeah, an amazing pullback there from PGS, really showing a return to form. You know, it is pretty much night and day uh, from that last game where they almost looked like they were floundering against ABD. And here it looks like ABD is floundering against them. So I think it's pretty much anyone's guess about what's going to happen in game three. Wow. Uh, I mean, we did call a 2-1 ABD, but uh, it's going to be really scary if PGS are able to overcome it. I'm surprised, though, if PGS are doing so well. Um, because it did seem like ABD had a lot of momentum, you know, in this game, in this game coming out from that 28 to three victory in that first game one, but now immediately, I guess, you know, chat was saying troll picks. I don't know if it was really troll or ego or anything like that. I think it was just unfortunate. The comp just didn't go the way that they wanted. That being said, you know, there were some, there were some really big highlights. Poseidon still doing what he can around the map. Dilly as well. And Kawhi are not really doing too bad either. So if this is going to go to game three, I really don't think that, you know, this is going to be a blowout as these last two games have seen uh, to kind of be. Yeah, I think this third game will really be, you know, kind of who takes the marbles. We did see ABD have a really strong game. PGS also had a really strong game. And now both of these teams really know what the other team is really aiming to pick towards. You know, they do have that Ramus counterpick still for Rave. And the Tristana on Jin Solo there, you know, our team, uh, Survey Core, being very scared of it. I think we banned it in both of our games against PGS because we just knew that the flex was too strong. And if Jin Solo was able to pick it up, he was going to unfortunately uh, take a dump on top of the Statistical Free Tanner. But, uh, <laughs> take a dump ABD. on Statistical Free Tanner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it seems like ABD has now learned that lesson and are hopefully going to carry that into their next game. Yeah, I mean, I think if you are ABD, you're kind of hitting, uh, you know, the planning sheet and saying, what more can we do? What are we going to do differently that we have not done in these last two games? But whatever they come out with, I really hope that it's an amazing game three. We will be taking a short break here as we try to load in and get set up for game three. You know, ring the silver scrapes, I suppose, because this is going to be an absolute banger. I know Tanner's been waiting for the silver scrapes. I'm surprised that we are going to get back-to-back -back series with silver scrapes nonetheless, but we are, in fact, going to be having silver scrapes yet again. Are you shocked that we're going to have silver scrapes here? I mean, not really. You know, ABDXD and all, but ABD does oh, tend geez. to have some very games where they can throw the early game too much, and it does end up looking like how it did. Mm-hmm. But I do definitely think the game is kind of in their hands for this game three. They could show another performance like game one and just pull out ahead and make it really impossible for PGS to come back. Or they could have another week early game and it really depends on how they want to play it and what kind of draft they want to attack PGS with. All right, with that being said, we will be now moving into our break. When we come back, ABD versus PGS, the score is tied one and one. Don't go anywhere. We are going to be watching the third place match, third game here of the KDL Season 4 Playoffs.
right, and we are back here for game three. We heard the Silver Scrapes play twice. This is going to be an amazing game, PGS versus ABD. I believe there was a gentleman's agreement. I wasn't quite sure, or I wasn't quite able to actually to catch out all of that. But I am joined by, once again, Stu here for uh, the second in a row Silver Scrapes game three here of the KDL Season 4 playoffs. Oh, I don't know about in a row. I did 2-0. Uh, oh, true, true. Here. Okay, 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 okay. Fair enough. The second, at least, in playoffs this season. There we go. Maybe not in a row. Yeah, I think actually the last 2-1 was also against ABD. Ooh. And I think that's what draws them in here into this third place match. So maybe a little bit of flashbacks that from them. As you see PGS, you know, bringing up the usual two bands. We'll see if they round it off with uh, maybe Ramus if they feel so inclined. As the Shastana is banned away by ABD, adding that to their first three bands, not wanting to experience that again. Wait, so there is not a troll ban or is this a serious game? Because I know that there was a little bit of banter here and there, so I'm not quite sure what they're actually doing here. I guess this B1 will, will kind of. I'm not play sure it what's happening either. Uh, <laughs> I did message Henry in between the games. Did you see the first pick, Dilly Jink? Something to look forward to. Uh, I did message Henry in between these games and asked him if it was going to be a 2 1 PGS, and he said no, 2 1 ABD. <laughs> oh, jeez. So Wait, Henry said that. <laughs> okay, the 80 carry of PGS is saying no it's actually going to be the enemies who win so who knows they could be actually spinning for their champs here malfighting oh, really no. gonna be picked out here i definitely think that they are spinning <laughs> there's just no way <laughs> i mean matt has been known to play malfight in the past and so does ray you know both of these players had a lot of success in previous seasons with just the ability to just mm -hmm. press r when team fight oh. kind of do so it it is definitely in both of their fortes to see what's happening and Matt picking it away from Ray. Blind picking is a little, you know, a little skeptical. Uh, I said, well, we're going to pick the Ash. Ash, interesting. A lot of CC. Yeah, I mean, we'll be CC for them as well. I believe Jinx also has a hard time in lane versus Ash. You know, Ash not being too bad of a pick right now, but who wants to play Ash? Am I right? But uh, we'll be picking it up this game and uh, hoping to kind of neuter Dilly a little bit here in this ball lane. Is ABD scarred or something from Lulu? Because it does seem like every single chance that they get in every single one of these drafts, Lulu is one of those priority bans for them. So I'm actually surprised that we have not seen a Lulu come out at all this series. Um, but we will be seeing an immediate B2 Rel into a possible B3 Kane. This would be a very interesting Kane game for sure, seeing how that you practically have to blind jungle here. You also could just go for a top counter. Like there's not much that they can do here if you want to counter the Malphite. Yeah, and I mean, as well. the interesting thing with Malphite is, is he gonna theoretically, like, oh, no. oh, no, he looks like he was just hovering. He's like, guys, please let me have a little bit of fun. I want to play Kate. And the team is just saying, nope, you are on Kim Tank duty. Lock in Hack Room. Oh, my God. I just realized Kawhi Star is actually on Rel. Oh, my God. I'm about to have a fanboy moment. Oh, my God. His Rel <laughs> is just... His rel is just amazing, dude. His rel, and I'm not sure if you played it, Stu, but I'm sorry to do this to you. His rel is literally like one of the best rels in the KDL. It's just, it's here. Okay, granted, it didn't help them versus never lose, but it still is good, right? Like, it's still pretty, pretty crazy. We'll be seeing an immediate Zed ban now coming out as well. Yeah, this really does hint towards another AD mid. Lucian is still open. Uh, it is something that Penelope likes to play as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if. PGS do pick it up. You know, Jinso, when given these champions that really allow him to oppress his opponent and express his skill a lot in this Tristana, in this Lucian, mm -hmm. really does allow him to dominate these lanes. And we're seeing, you know, the Orn band away. They're not going to pick it this time, so they will make sure that Rave doesn't. You know, the signature Rave or and the Karma will be banned, taking Kelly off of her comfort. You know, Rakan is still open, but in the row, I'm not sure many Ori people is perfect would like that. Oriana oh. is really good here into this comp. I definitely would be surprised Surely. at a Draven here. Uh, I mean, I was going to piggyback on your point earlier. He played the Lucian in Season 3, and they eventually won a championship off of that. We could be... This is more than likely just a hopper for the Lucian. Wait, Jenna. Wait. Jenna is actually a huge... Oh, the Rel. Rel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought that this was a top side for whatever reason. No, Janna is very oppressive in the realm. Janna, you know, this kind of itsy ditsy champion that doesn't really do much is actually in an insane lane bully in the realm. Makes it she can't mm -hmm. really have enough HP to go in 
And when she does go in, if she times the tornadoes correctly, she can cancel that kind of signature combo of Rel. So the onus really is on top of Kelly to make sure that she can shut down Kawhi, be there where he is, and make sure he can't play the game. I'm As super, Cho'Gath is locked in. I'm super surprised that we actually are going to get a Cho lock in. I would have thought with the immense amount of mobility on the side of PGS that you really don't want to go anything that, you know, is kind of focusing on that. But when it does come down to that front line, look at that unkillable front line there of ABD. I didn't watch... Uh, Godzilla versus King Kong, but I'm sure as hell gonna watch it today uh, in the form of this game three, you know, Malphite versus the Cho'Gath. It's looking very, very spicy. And again, that Jin Soul you talked about, I talked about it. We are gonna be seeing the solution pick here in this game three divisive, or sorry, decisive match rather uh, for PGS. Ooh, it's so really make it or break it. I'm not sure about the solution pick here. To this... the victor, yeah. I mean, it's a good pick early game but you really put a timer on yourself. It's kind of akin to picking Blitz. You really need to make one or two kills happen in the early stages of the game. Otherwise, you are just going to get completely outscaled and you're going to be useless to your team. And the real struggle for uh, PGS will be this Victor coming into this mid-game. They do have some range where they should be able to negate a lot of this poke just by outranking him. But they also don't really have a front line into this Victor. They have Malphite, but sure, he wants to really stack into more armor. So this Victor will be a problem with him if he does not get shut down early. But if we see a game akin to the one last one, I'm not sure he'll be able to get there. Right, that's just kind of the story of the game at this point. Just wait till the game happens. Wait till we see that mid-game mark. And depending on whoever is up by then, we surely should see our definitive uh, winner of this series. Uh, what are your thoughts, though, if you are watching? I just want to quickly switch over to our three-minute spectator delay, though. And uh, hopefully we can hear your thoughts in the chat.
All right, welcome back to our third place match here, third game. I just can't say those right in the right order, but nonetheless, we are going to be watching our game here between PGS versus ABD. The silver scrapes have been heard, and now we just need to hear who our third place finish of the KDL season is going to be. Will it be ABD, who had such nice momentum going into the season? They had so much hype. They built a lot of hype throughout the season. Maybe not from you, Stu, or the rest of the Survey Corps boys, but nonetheless, <laughs> they have a lot of hype. They have a lot of momentum behind them. Or will it be the former champions of Season 3, PGS, Protect Guardian Sphinx, they lost out on their MVP 80 carry, but they're looking to still go for the bronze medal here in this third place. Yeah, and I mean, it is an important medal to get. As you know, if you do get that third place, you do get a little bit of cash in your pocket and a little bit of, you know, some reparations for losing. But if you do get that fourth place, there is nothing going into your pocket. So they are still playing for something. And it's something to look forward to. And, you know, this Chogath... At least for me, Chogath is always a pleasure to watch as he just kind of, you know, cheats landing phase, you know, gets his stacks, starts eating people, and then he just walks on your ADC, passes E, and they just die and just get eaten. It's always so hilarious to watch Chogath just go around and just devour people. So it's, uh, it's something to watch out for. 100%. And we were talking about it in that three-minute break. Uh, this is a jinx comp, right? I mean, I hate to say it after I said it like five times to you privately, but this is 100% a jinx comp. So much peel, so much setup for you that I think if you are watching this game from an outside perspective, you are literally putting a magnifying glass right now on Dilly and saying, this has got to be your career play. This has got to be your career game in the KDL, especially seeing how much faith that your team has on you if you really want to go for the B1 Jinx. They've been trying to secure the Jinx throughout every single game here in this series. It has not been able to be given to Dilly, but finally, when they need it the most, they are able to get it through and they immediately snag it off with the B1. Granted, there is still so much setup on the side of PGS to shut him down, and that's why we kind of were like, oh, if he doesn't have cleanse here, I think that it's pretty much over, just because, you know, Ash Arrow early, uh, into Toma, into, you know, this Malphite, into Lucian, there's just so much to kill you, that if you are playing this right now at this Jinx's angle, this has got to be one of your best ever games if you really want to go for that bronze medal as well. Yeah, and the pressure is really on Dewey, you know. <laughs> sometimes people don't really think about it because it is just KDL and, you know, it's just, you know, a relatively small amount of viewers. But for right. a lot of these players, the pressure does build up, especially mm -hmm. for a relatively new player. I believe Dewey just started this season. I don't think I've seen him in the past seasons. I'm, I wasn't too tuned in in season three, so he could have uh, been no, there. No, he, he, this is his first ever season. Yeah, you know, he's made it to playoffs. He's in this third place match, and the onus is really on him with this Jinx composition to make them win this game. So the pressure is certainly on him, and it'll be interesting to see how he holds up to it. I mean, a lot of these players are repeat players, right? Almost every single person in this lobby right now, other than Dilly, has played in a KDL playoff series before. I think this is Dilly's first ever playoff series. He has reached, uh, you know, the third place finish, not really going for the goal, not really going for finals. But granted, it still is a hell of a start, right? A lot of players never really get to this position. Yeah, I mean, especially with the way that the playoffs work now or have worked since Season 2, I should say, with the Round Robin before. Uh, season 3, Season 3. Season 3, Season 3. Uh, with the Round Robin before, it's possible to just not even make it into the playoffs mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, you know, it's nice that he's able to get it here and he's proven himself to be at least a playoffs-worthy player, but he needs to show himself to be a third-place-worthy player at least. Well, that's the thing, right? That's kind of why we switched out that formatting, just because it feels like you had to earn the playoff rather than automatically being inside of it. And, it, and it's kind of better this way as well, because you do get to, you know, face almost every single team. If Actually, I believe it is every single team. Every single team, yeah. you get to, you know, learn about their play styles in the event that you eventually do have to play against them. And this is going to be ABD's second bout playing against PGS, right? They've played versus them in the regular season before. I believe PGS won it with a 580 carry comp. So, you know, it, it happens. Yeah, it happens. It happens. But I definitely think that both of these teams have earned it. Dilly has earned it as well. There's a lot of skeptics, though, for Dilly, um, because, again, this is his first season. This is his first playoff run. They're, they're more so on the boat that, you know, Poseidon, Penelope, Kawhi, Star, Rave kind of carried you through it. And I feel like, you know, all that, uh, all that negativity or all that criticism really kind of builds upon you. So I'm hoping that he is able to channel that into a positive win for himself today. 
Granted, he is down right now 6 CS in the lane. It's not like the lane is over or anything like that. But he is getting fairly zoned off because, again, the Janna has so much poke pressure. It's insane how much damage that W does to you early. Yeah, Janna is just a really cool champion to play against in lane. Just so obnoxious. You know, I think a lot of bot lane mains will kind of feel the same energy. We're playing against this champ is always a bottle of fun, and it's something to look forward to. And she just has a lot of pressure inside of this lane, but actually the nice thing for ABD is that she hasn't really done too much to them so far. They've really minimized her poke, and she hasn't really gone forward and gone for much poke at all, so they are still full HP, so when level 6 comes around, or when Hecarim looks to come around as he's doing so now, there's the potential for stuff to happen. Hecarim charging up with the ghost here. Immediately initiates with that E. The flash away from the chompers there for the jinx. But the flash now from Kawhi are going to go forward. They're able just to stun lock Kelly in her place. Unfortunate stuff. And they do blow the flash from the ash. But they're able to take Kelly as a reward as well. Uh, that sounded weird. But um, <laughs> nonetheless... <laughs> See, it's difficult when you're casting. But nonetheless, that is going to be first blood here for ABD. Yeah, I mean, well played by ABD there, really making a play happen. Uh, unfortunately for them, they did, <laughs> you know, use two flashes and the ignite. So they will have the summoner spell advantage in the bot lane for PGS. But you still did end up getting that kill, and you did make it happen. As Toma is here looking oh, to get a kill in the top lane. Yeah, Drave is just dead. There's no point in even shout casting that one. That was just over in the lickety split there. Rave does have 10 CS right now. He first spot the Mercs, actually is going to undo it. Probably will go for that Bombie Cinder and essentially will do just that. Immediate TP does mean that he is able just to shove out. And he, again, will just immediately TP back. Ooh, poor Penelope there, missing all of those ranged minions. Yeah, that was and Lucian here, you know, building up a nice little CS lead into this victor. But not really able to get too much happening other than that. I really want to get a kill happening around this level 6 mark. As he is starting to poke Penelope down and Penelope is getting low on that mana. But you really want to make a kill happen here in this mid lane. And you could see, you know, potentially Toma or Poseidon coming into this mid lane to interject and force it one way or the other. But as it is for now, you know, both of these junglers just got back from their reset and are going to be going back to clearing. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I think realistically right now, Again, we said it earlier, the Jinx is still the focal point of this comp. This is an entirely Jinx comp. Ash right now uh, is able to hit that level 6, I believe, before the Jinx, since she was able to just zone off uh, the Jinx with the threat of the Janna. And it actually will be Janna who immediately levels up to 5, but Ash surely will not be too far behind her for the 6. Oh, calling now in the mid lane. Wave, unfortunately, just enters at the perfect time, so Penelope is not at threat of dying at all. Kawhi Star now unmounting into the zap, into just that lockdown. They're going to give this one over to Dilly there. Rockets, the get excited, is going to be able to fire one shot at Henry, but one too many already. Ooh. Yeah, and Kelly not really showing too much practice on top of this champion. You know, Janna, she does poke a lot, and she does have to get forward to poke. But you really have to respect the jungler when you play Janna, because you are so mm -hmm. squishy and you are so easy to die. She does have to respect the jungler a lot, and unfortunately for her, the jungler has just always been bot. So it's just a tragic turn of events as the bot lane here is uh, looking to potentially start dragon. Yep, they're just going to just leash this real quick as Poseidon was just finishing up his Krugs. But 100% KP right now, especially when it comes to playing towards that bot side. Kawhi Star and Dilly can do no wrong right now. Toma now looking to steal off this. Uh, wow, looking to steal that scuttle. Rave is able to get that last hit. Lilting Lullaby now going to be casted as well. Matt does have the Malphite Ooh. Unstoppable Force. Wow, the Blast Cone saves him from utter denial. I really am curious as to what Rave is saying in these comms. Oh, he's definitely calling uh, the PGS team cringe right now as they send two <laughs> people for him. But, you know, How cringe them, is that, man? How cringe is yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Like voice comms from Rave. <laughs> But, I mean, Toma and Matt both messed up their ultimates. You know, Toma waited too long in order to get that ultimate damage out, and Matt, unfortunately, did want to save his flash. You know, if he had just not greeted and flash art, Rave was almost certainly dead there, but unfortunately, oh, he does value. you. Oh, yeah. Penelope not having a good time farming under turret, you know. Right, right, there. right. The really casters struggled. are really putting a damper into his plans. Now the W now from Victor are going to stun lock Jinsoul in his place, though. Lucian does not have the culling for another two seconds. Finally does get it. Culling now going to come out as well. Penelope not doing his best to dodge out every single shot flash forward, but it's a trade one for one. It's a trade one for one, and that's honestly fine for Jinso. It gets him mm -hmm. ahead. You traded flashes. They both have TPs up, and he denies a small wave. So 
you know, you take that, and as Victor, you take it as well. It's just kind of a net neutral kind of thing. But uh, with, you know, Jinso getting more gold, you know, you see he picks up that pickaxe. He's going to be finishing his coal here soon. That first item's going to come out, and it's going to become a lot harder for Victor to win. Toma majestically prouncing right now into the top lane. The Q does come out. Tags rave for this Lilting Lullaby. Lilting Lullaby not available. Oh, oh my god. Flash over. Just accept your death. Toma does go down here. Immediate TP now from Lucian into the bot lane. Kwaisar is now going to try to unmount right on top of Jinsel to flash away as well. There's no cleanse to be had, so there is a dead horsey in the lane. Rel's horse may go down, and she will go down with it. Unfortunate stuff there on the side of PGS. Uh, or sorry, ABD, not only did we see the Flash Dyrus, uh, sorry, fail Flash Dyrus Flash, but, oh my goodness, immediately trading now Kawhi Star as well, uh, an arguable top three support in the KDL. Yeah, we see, you know, again, the ball lane here of PGS not respecting oh my the jumper. Oh my god, Hecarim is, is here as well. Yeah, Hecarim really charging it up. Jenna actually will get tagged, but it does seem like they really want to go for Ash first. Oh, There's a Flash Jenna to be really had for her, double kill run. going over to Dilly this time around as well. Oh, and this is what you really want is ABD. You know, sure, you lose mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. kills in the mid and top lane, but you get two kills onto Dewey. And, you know, in this kind of jinx composition, Dewey picking up free kills is really what you're looking for. Oh, 100%. Gets the two free kills there. That's a double. Uh, and then immediately looks to translate it into multiple plates here in the bot lane. I definitely think that they get this tier two of Quaister tanks. And yeah, it does seem like that will be the case here. No, it's really greedy, actually, if they stay here. I think that they just need to push out the wave and then immediately back. Jinx should be nearing, if not at that point right now, for a potential Kraken. I definitely think this is a Kraken game for her. Yeah, it definitely is. But the thing is with PGS is they do have this Malphite. And, you know, as much as Malphite may just be an R bot, all he has to do is R into the back line, pick up Dewey, mm -hmm. and as long as someone on his team can follow up, Dewey will just end up dead. So they do have that kind of get out of jail free card happening, but they do need to make sure that at least one of their lanes are at least somewhat ahead so they can just dive onto Dewey and make sure he's not able to do anything. Now, I've never seen this actually built on Rel, but is McKill's viable here for the Rel? Since, again, Dilly did not take the cleanse that we are typically, like, I don't know, expected yeah. to see in an Ash lane, right? Like, it's very, like confusing not to see this cleanse so do you think mckills yeah. is going to be a pickup here for Kawhi, and that it leaves dilly open for a potential double qss situation so that he can not only qss the ashar but maybe a little ting lullaby from the lilia as well i mean if you trust your adc you trust in their flash and you trust in their ability to flash out of objectives and it looks like that's what he's going to be doing he's got that cloth armor and the kindle gem which means he's probably going to go lock it mm -hmm. and lock it can be a nice little stop gap for uh, the McHale's until you get it, but you almost certainly want to build a second item into this composition. If you don't get McHale's, it feels like you're just kind of letting Dilly die for free. Oh, 100%. It will be the Herald of Summon in the mid lane. The tier 1 does take quite a bit of damage. Left with a plate and about a half. First tower not taken around the map just yet, though. Not much happening right now. Hawkshot going to be used as well, out for a little bit of vision. Yeah, and you can really see the uh, pain in Henry's build as he just has his tier 2 boots while Dilly comes back to lane with his magical boots and that Kraken Slayer. So really bot lane, not really able to hop, or have too much happen as Dilly is just so far ahead, but we can see the same happening for the side of PGS in that jungle and in that mid lane. Both of them have bounties and both of them so strong at this point. It looks like they will just be kind of giving away this first dragon as bot lane reset and the side of ABD is just there promptly able to pick it up. Yeah, this will be the second dragon of the, uh, of the game, sorry, for game three. And it will be the second dragon for ABD at that matter. And Infernal sold this game, interesting. And it really is very crucial that ABD pick it up, especially paired with the Cho'Gath and with the Jinx for that matter. Just immediately able to burst about every one late game. Yeah, and I mean, the Inferno Soul goes well for both of these teams. You know, Ash and Lilia both want that additional AD and AP, and Victor and Jinx really want it as well. So either team that picks this up is going to be uh, a lot stronger coming in as Penelope is uh, getting chunked oh, out here. Oh, just on the, on the tip. 
Wow, uh, I feel like that's going to be a sound bite. But just right on the tip <laughs> of that Victor's W, he is actually going to be caught here. Penelope now might just try to follow this up here. Poseidon with the E knock back into the Victor. E now going to be thrown out. Rupture not able to just to correctly get it, but the Victor ult Ooh. will tag upon it. Remember, that's an Ash ult that directly fires mid on target. A couple auto attacks from Tomo will be all that you need to claim the life of Penelope here. Oh, uh, amazing that's arrow. Actually... It was super well paid from Penelope as well, because he can just press R at any point. He was within range that entire time, but he waited for the calling to start and then immediately silenced him. You know, a little known fact about Victor's ultimate is that it does, you know, do like a channel silence where it'll just silence for half a second. It'll stop anything that you're currently channeling. And you do have to channel that calling. So it does mean that Poseidon will live on top of that as well. 100%. It's not looking way too good for you if you are PGS. Jinx will actually get tagged down. Lilting Lullaby now going to interestingly be casted as well. The Q now going to be finding Kawhi Star. Mm. I'm not quite sure what that was. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Toma, I would guess a misclick, but if not, then it was probably just him being a little too ambitious that was really deep into the enemy lines, and you don't really have a way to get in there without Malphite. So, you know, maybe just uh, limit testing a little bit, trying to figure out what he can and can't go for. As uh, we can see, some lane swaps happening here for both of these teams. Hacker will be spotted out, so Jin Soul should be aware to kind of play a little bit further back, or they might even look to collapse on him. Lucian just looking for a little bit of a pick here. I'm not going to really spend too much time in the bot lane here for the side of ABD. Nonetheless, though, Infernal is going to be spawning within the next 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, we see, you know, Chilling out here has kind of been passively farming, picking up stacks from monsters, not really getting too much otherwise. We can see they're sitting around six stacks right now, so it's sitting at that huge HP margin. Ah, uh, been dilly. 700. Ooh. He did have to pop the heal. Still does have the flash, that's an important one. But uh, a little bit less burst protection. Really well played from Jinsoul there to almost just solo kill Dilly while Kawhi just looked like he was walking away, maybe clearing a ward. The Jinx is still in a really favorable position here if you are ABD 3 0 and 1 for the Jinx pick. Is down 10 CS at this point to the counterpart, Henry Ash. Uh, but at the same time, it's a Jinx comp and the Jinx is fed. As you pass that 20 minute mark, it just becomes increasingly more difficult here. PD probably going to be bought here, but I think RFC is going to uh, more than likely be the first zeal item of the game here for Dilly. Yep, and an important thing to look out for is this jam. You know, enchantresses are really strong in lane and they can do a lot of bullying. But once it comes to this mid game, a lot of supports fail to position them well and they always end up getting caught out in a lot of these fights. So Kelly really has to be mindful of her positioning, realize where she can and can't be, and uh, just try and make sure she doesn't get caught out. 100%. We see repeated pings now looking for a little bit of help in the mid lane. Toma actually hovering down on top of this top try. Will actually land on top of Rave. Rave now not wanting to go down without a little bit of a fight. Flash Malphite unstoppable onslaught. They are going to be able to block off that super mega death rocket that was fired from Dilly. Dilly now free hitting in the back line. The Ash Hero actually does connect onto Dilly. That is not the target that you wanted. I told you. I told you, Stu. What happens when you land on top of Dilly? Oh no, not again. I I've seen this in a dream! Oh my god, it's a triple killer Jinsoul! Just like that, they lose the lead! No, I was telling you in that three minute spectator delay, uh, Stu, that what happens when she does get that tag, she is free bait for the Lucian, and it exactly happens. Somehow, able just to split everyone. Culling now coming out, forces Penelope's flash here. E forward could mean his death, and that's a four kills there for Jinsoul's Lucian. Oh no, a six and two Lucian! Oh my god! What on earth? And a double fill flash from Rave this game. Oh, oh my yeah, god, my I'm prediction is going to be wrong. I've been 100% right on every single series in KDL so far playoffs. What the hell? Oh my god. <laughs> With Rave, it definitely sucks as well. With the best of three, you know, this is your third and final match. You got absolutely stomped in the last game, and now you're coming into this third game, and you fail flash twice. It is such a mental gap right now, and Rave is undeniably going to be tilted. And he just really needs to kind of focus on the game, 
Make sure he's not getting tilted out as they're looking to fight around this dragon. Matt here really holding his ultimate. Oh, this could be a big oh, one. Oh, it takes two. Lilting Lullaby's coming up in two seconds. Rave is probably just going to go down here. Oh, Toma gets it as well. Oh, I, I think it's better. Okay, this is going to sound troll, but I think it's better if Lilia gets it rather than the Ash. Because at this point, I'd rather have the Lilia snowball and just passively burn for health percentage on top of Rave rather than having that Ash right now who is looking by the looks of it to get, I think, a Runins. I think that's just going to be a Runins. Um, yeah. But wow like uh i don't know what to say it's so hard to be an abd fan sometimes dear god this is like this is like full build and ins all over again oh no <laughs> <laughs> super mega death uh, rocket is going to be fired and it will hit kelly but it will not hit this herald will actually herald just go down here no they don't so they just leashed it for free okay yeah it looks like they did waste a little bit of time thought they would do it a little bit faster but uh I really think they should be funneling more gold on the Ash here. You know, try and give the Ash the kills when you can, because uh, I'm just forgetting champion names here. Lucian and Lilia are both so far ahead already. Mm -hmm. You really mm -hmm. don't want more gold going on them. You want to make sure mm -hmm. that Ash is strong as well. So no matter who Malphite ults on top of and whoever is next to them, they should be able to take them out. Oh, 100%. And there's a little bit of a CS gap here. 20 CS difference for the Ash. She's looking to see us at that 10 CS per minute mark. Malphite is just hiding in the bushes, sneakfully looking at Rave as Rave is just trying to push out the oh, wave here. Oh, Toma's coming. Yeah, Toma's coming again. Immediately now firing the Malphite Q. They will get the tag on to Rave with that E. Lilting Lullaby does go down as well. The Frostfire Gauntlet from Cho'Gath not allowing anyone to escape. Poseidon might have just ran into his own death, truth be told. He is burning for a lot from Toma. Toma immediately able just to burn through everything that Rave has to offer. An immediate, by the looks of it, a Zonia buy here next as well. And, uh, oh my god, 10 stacks of the Dark Seal as well. Going to go into a potential 25-pager of that... Um, oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking, Stu. Help me out. Off Magi's. The, Magi's. There you go. But, oh my god. Holy smokes. Oh, PGS I've... just randomly finding one play that just continuously is going their favor. Yeah, I mean, Ray failed Flash twice. He's not having a great game. I assume they think he's tilted and they're just spam ganking him, trying to tilt him out of this game. And it looks like it's working so far. Rave keeps getting caught out in front of this tower, being super greedy with his wave pushing and just not, you know, not playing respectfully of what Malphite and Lilia can do. Poseidon now going to face check this Janna. Janna immediately answering with the Q. Poseidon actually ran right into the range of that Lilia's E. He will be burning down here. Lilting Lullaby is not available for another 10 seconds. Blue Tower, meanwhile, Tier 1 going to be sieged down in the top side for Matt as he sneakfully just runs away there. Neither top laner does have this potential TP for the Dragon Fight. Or sorry, they should have the TP for the Dragon Fight. Nothing right now, though. For whatever reason, my brain was like, oh yeah, drag spawning in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, it happens. It happens. You know, it makes me difficult sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Technical difficulties, brain difficulties. I mean, the nice thing for ABD is that they do have three dragons. They do have the soul point. And if they want to, you know, burger flip this dragon. Burger and, uh, flip. And see who gets it. You know, if ABD just picks up one, they do get that infernal soul. And that does make Jinx and Victor a lot more powerful. But surely PGS will play respectfully around these. You know, they should be pinging out the Jinx ultimate, trying to block it, making sure they have full control of the Dragon Pit, and trying not to let ABD have any of these. They really just need to kind of, you know, pick up these dragons, force their advantage around the map, and ideally get Baron and try and end. As you can see, the ping's coming out here for Victor. Victor, oh, the Ash Arrow coming out. Oh, the no, it hits him. Coming out. Oh, no. Oh, no. How come... Oh, they're funneling bro. it on the Toma. How come no oh, one yeah. on this team is playing safely away from the Ash? Immediately now just dying as well. Oh, no. And he is forced yeah. to use the flash. He is forced to use so much out of that entire skirmish, popping the ult as well. Matt still does have that ultimate. Rave now just peeking into the dragon pit here, looking oh, to establish no. some vision here. Lilting Lullaby is available here for Rave. Immediate flash right over the wall into the Krugs. Poseidon right. here, though, dangerous position for them. They haven't spotted out Dilly yet, though. Yeah, and Penelope there, unfortunately, caught shopping. He had the flash caught available. And, yeah, you know, he was looking at the screen instead of his store 
He would have been able to flash away, but Fortune for Rave, he does land a flash that time. A uh, good start for him for this game, but they are looking to zone off the entire team of ABD here from this dragon. They should be really looking to stop the Jinx Rocket. Yay. Okay. Okay, that would have been really, really bad. You can see the pings coming out on top of Malphite. Malphite uh, almost allowed that Jinx Rocket to connect and potentially steal it, but luckily for them, it did not do so. And they are just going to be walking towards this bear, and they could potentially just do this. Malphite is tanky enough. Jinx is on reset. And it looks like they're still making up their mind, maybe trying to bait ABD into it. They do see Jinx resetting. The pings are coming out. They are looking to chuck it. Jinx has no rocket, so they will have to face check it. Oh, okay, no, they the, see Victor. The arrow actually does land onto Victor. Now E going to be tagging onto Reeve as well. Q from Jenna going to be going a little bit awry. Actually, I think it did land because I did see a Summoner's Airy go out. Yeah, it did end up landing, but you know that Airy damage, you know, not much outside of lane. I think that was on Kawhi? Some vision. I think so as well. Um, Otherwise, I have no you... idea what hit him. Yeah, I mean, PGS here doing their best uh, Tanner cosplay and not doing Baron 7k gold ahead. Mm -hmm. It's probably smart of them here due to the fact of AVD's team composition and how you really don't want to be caught in an enclosed area. You either do have that rail, the Victor, and the Cho'Gath. All of these champions love it when you just stack in the pits and they can easily put their ultimates on top of you. But they really need to get a pick. Ideally, when Ash Arrow is back up, they can just have Henry get on top of Dilly and just R him and just make him dead. And once... Jinx is dead, they can pretty much have their way with the map. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a Tanner cosplay or anything, because he is doing more than 10k at this point. But Jinso absolutely putting on a performance and might look to make it a little bit more point blank right into Rave, oh though. Really God. interesting play, but look at the damage. There is no potential to be had. Rave just going night night immediately as well. Poseidon putting on his fancy feet work. Immediately popping the ghost, immediately popping that E. Kawhi star. Can you do no wrong? Gets that double in the back line. They're able to trade two for nothing. Jinso now here on the repeat as well. It's Dilly who is free hitting with these Dilly rockets. Wow, he's free hitting, but look at how much damage he's doing. No damage. Look at Toma! Toma is flexing, he's galloping into the sunset. Dilly, I don't know what's happening. What happened? They lost one fight, they had so much momentum, and they've just lost every single fight since. This is a championship Lucian. This is a player who literally won a championship on this character, on this champion, and somehow you let it through. Somehow you give this man a quadra for no apparent reason, and you're kind of reaping what you sow at this point if you're ABD. It's very unfortunate, but I still think that there's a lot of potential to be had as well here if you are um if you are abd i think that all you need is literally that infernal soul to get back into the reins who cares if it's a 9k gold lead at this point anything that you can do would help you tremendously i feel like abd right now are going with the titanic or they they're going down with the titanic rather and they're just not trying to swim out well, speaking of, actually, they actually might just catch out Toma here, who does have the flash. Kawhi Star, beautiful dismount there. They're forcing Toma away from the wall, but at what cost here? Sion Lee is able to slow them as well. Toma there in the backside. Oh my god, he's TPing into his death. Q gonna land on top of no one, but Penelope will get the trade around kill on top of Kelly. That's a clean two for one there for in favor of PGS. Oh no. Yeah, and... ABD really trying to make a play happen there, trying to catch Toma back in Greeley, and unfortunately for them, you know, Gensel was there, and they were able to pick up that two-for-one. We can see Crowny's Comet going past in the mid lane, <laughs> as uh, PGS are really looking here to kind of position for another pick, maybe try and get Dilly. Oh, and they are right oh, on top of Oh, no! Bye-bye goes Dilly, and bye-bye no, goes Rave. No way! A championship Lucian, championship Lucian. 12, 2, and 3 on Jinso's Lucian. This man was feared for it in Season 3. They always perma-banned this champion against him. The Tristana was taken off the board this time around for a flex towards mid, but they forgot about the Lucian for that matter, and they will be immediately putting their sights right on top of the Sparon, which should go down with relative ease. The Dragon now is going to be spawning within 50 seconds, but with Baron empowered backs, with a lot of gold in their pockets, with the momentum of this game, it really feels like PGS are going to be able to get this second Infernal dragon for themselves as well yeah and all they really need to do is just position around this baron pit again you know dilly does not have flash he does not have heal it looks like Kawhi opted into a bramble second rather than going for this michaelis it's not finished anyway so it wouldn't matter but you really need everything you can to keep dilly alive and unfortunately for them dilly is just going to get ash out again in this dragon fight and just end up dying either that or a malphite you'd see malphite just kind of walks point blank at him walks right through Cho'Gath and just right. like okay 
you're dead now. Granted, he has the QSS now, but at what cost? Is it little too late for you if you are ABD? I think at this point, Poseidon just needs to YOLO it and go for a burger flip Dragon Steel. I don't think that there is any potential that to be had here. Alternatively as well, I completely forgot it and I'm not sure how. But you have Godzilla on your team. You literally have a guy with like a 1.5k gold smite. Like, there is no reason why you should not be able to get this. Now, Raven, immediate flash over the wall. He really wants to feast on these stacks. Poseidon is going to be the target in the back line. Raven's still in the pit here. He gets it! They're no! No! They don't get it! Oh my god, they got Dilly as well! QSS now being used from Dilly. E from Lilia will slow Dilly! He's going down! There ain't no way! Did PGS just do it? Did they just do it? Oh my god, no way! They reverse sweep ABD? No way! No way! I'm out of my chair right now! They're not able to get that dragon! They, they have the feast! He didn't even press feast on that final play! Nexus Tower 1 is going to be the target at this onslaught. Poseidon is looking to engage here, but look at the damage! Shinsou is tanking the tower! He ultimately will go down to Penelope, who takes Kelly with him as well. I don't think that they're able to end here, but they do get one tower out of it. Poseidon now with Kawhi Star. Kawhi Star has the dismount. Ephraim Lilia will tag upon Poseidon. No lilting lullaby to be had for the next 40 seconds. No flash either for this Lilia. Oh my god, what just happened? Oh, and PGS getting a little over ambitious there. I think they maybe could have ended probably. Eh. Actually, I think, I think if Jinsoul really does not, if, if Jinsoul yeah. does not go forward, they end. Yeah, they for sure end, but they got a little ambitious there. Wanted to end the game, forced this reverse sweep out. But fortunately for them, they don't lose pretty much anything. They just lose that bounty on top of Lucian, and it goes over to Victor. And that's not really who you wanted to go to, but you're still 13k gold ahead. You have two Infernal Dragons. All you need is another good fight like the last one, and you can just go ahead and end down mid. Oh my god, I just want to point out that Jinsoul has more kills than the entirety of ABD. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. The Cho'Gath pick has zero kills right now with, like, I don't think any fee stacks from... I think it was, like, one dragon and then the majority have just been in lane. But, dear god. Oh my god, Malphite is 1-0-16. He's, he's responsible for 17 KP. Yeah, that's the and most KPI I think I've ever seen. Around, what was that like 15 minutes into the game and he had six stack? And coming into 30 minutes of the game, he has seven, so he's not had a fortunate time of picking up any stacks on any dragons or champions. As they were looking for him, Crowny's comment goes wide once again on top of Chilgath, but uh, they will be pushing out this bot wave. All five members of PGS down oh, here. No. Oh no, why, sir? Oh, uh, Matt here having a little bit of fun, ping ponging, <laughs> <laughs> not really sure what that was, but. Doing his very, best hair cosplay, ping ponging. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Very unfortunate stuff, though. It seemed like Reeve flashed into the pit, expecting to feast on it, but for whatever reason, they weren't able to get it. But forget about that old play. Super Mega Death Rocket is fired on top of Matt. Look at Kawhi Star just get deleted. Oh my goodness! Penelope walks a little bit far too forward. That's going to be a double kill going over to the Ash. Chinsoul is able to trade it off. Dilly goes down next. Poseidon is going to be the last one standing. E from Lilia into the Lilting Lullaby. Triple going over to Jinsoul. That's game. Oh my god, what just happened? No freaking way! ABD get reverse swept in the third place match! The immediate TP now top wave? Um, man, they really want that triple in hip open, I guess? Yeah, and, and that's game. The client just died. That's game! Wow! PGS are your third place winners of the KDL Season 4. Yeah, and I mean, a little bit of a disappointing series there for ABD fans. They had a really strong showing in that first game. They looked pretty much unbeatable in that first game. But PGS here, you know, pulling their best uh, perks cosplay and saying, you know, perks. when I'm down in a series, this is when I can reverse sweep. This is my comfort zone. And uh, they were able to pull it off and uh, bring themselves to that third place finish. Oh my god, I, I, I have no words. I don't know what I just watched. That was... Uh... Really heartbreaking to see. I want to ask you, and I don't mean this as BM or anything, but is fourth place the highest Reeve has ever placed, or is this new for him as well, like fourth place? Um, It's somewhere Again, around... I don't mean this as BM or anything. I just, I'm just curious. I'm not sure how they placed in season three, but I think it is somewhere around there. I believe they've been kept out of third and fourth place by teams like Tanner, you know, the infamous third place goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is somewhere around there, you know, another unfortunate, uh, season four ABD, but I do believe they are, you know, still working on it. They have been slowly coming up as they've made these roster changes and making things happen. 
And I wouldn't be surprised to see them stick around for next season and perhaps have a better performance that season. Well, hundred percent, very unfortunate stuff. Uh, in this game in general, I'm I'm really sad that this is going to, you know, be the last showing of this ABD squad, or at least this iteration. They played an amazing season. We are going to be trying to interview them as soon as possible. But, man, w what a third place match. I don't think that we could have asked for any better, to be honest with you. That was an yeah. absolute uh, crazy ending here. I'm going to just put up the damage charts here, and then we will be slowly but surely dragging everyone in here. All right, we are talking with ABD this time around. ABD, <clears throat> I want to ask you guys first about your season, and then we'll kind of transition into this game. And uh, you know, your playoff run. I want to ask you, Rave, um, with the numerous iterations of ABD or the different teams that you've been a part of, what makes this team stand out compared to some of your other teams? Uh, Dilly's just the god on AD, honestly. We well, had yeah, Dilly this time instead of yeah. Songsta. Mm -hmm. Actually, like Songsta if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Very unfortunate stuff. Dilly, do you have a response? <laughs> do you feel like you... That's unfortunate. What? Well, it's unfortunate yeah, for Sungsta. We, we got farther. We got well, further it, with Dilly than we did Sungsta. Well, I mean that is true, but Sungsta's also like your number one fan in chat. He's always saying like ABD, let's go, and pretty sure he said ABD two O. It's okay. We wanted to take him out of uh, retirement this season, but the uh, oh. stars did not align, honestly. So. Well, oh, that is Mickey. unfortunate. That is unfortunate. I, I want to ask you guys. There was a lot of talk after, you know, you guys 28 to 3 them after that first game and that second game. Chat, well, I'm not really sure what that sound was, but chat was saying um, that it might have been an ego draft or anything like that. Was that just, you know, for fun draft? Did you guys kind of get more relaxed or more game comfortable two? on that game too? Yeah. Are we into draft? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we uh, into yeah. Draft. I just yeah, said, everybody, fuck it. Give me Glenn. Everybody, everybody <laughs> yeah. did. That's I why I was up two him. levels on Udyr and, like, had all the kills. I was I was having oh, we were fun bot lane. Don't, don't I was having fun that enters. game. Yeah. Uh, the, the top side of the map champ. won too hard the first game, so we had to, you know, even it out the second game. Mm -hmm. And the third one. Yeah, I had to make it up. I mean, third one, too. Third one, I just could not play. You cannot play to a gap into that team, like, at all. That's why we um, picked it just, fourth. Yeah. Um, were you guys trying to prio the Jinx the entire series, or...? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think Jinx is probably first pickable I mean, in, ahead almost every, well in almost early. every game. So that's why we banned it on red side. Yeah. And pick it first on blue side. I mean, everybody just plays Jinx. It's really easy. Yeah. What do you mean? It's really hard. I'm really good at it. <laughs> true, 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 true. Um, I mean, speaking about being really good at Jinx, I really wanted to probe your mind here, Dewey, about your summer spell choice. Right, I was did just about to say. Did you consider the cleanse, or did it uh, not come up in your mind? I thought about it, but I was like, I can just build QSS, but cleanse probably would have been better here. All right, well, I mean, an unfortunate series for you guys. I mean, you did have that strong showing in game one. You guys looked near unstoppable, but unfortunately for you guys, PGS did bring it back. Uh, did you guys expect that you guys would have such a strong showing in that first game and maybe uh, that you would continue that to the rest of the series? Or how did you expect the series to turn out? I got the I mean, Yeah, I was about to say you, you know, got I the expect we, I, I would assume most people expect to win every game. So that's what I expected. Uh, we didn't do that, though. So unlucky. Is it more Poseidon? And I don't mean to put this like in a position where you throw your teammates under the bus or anything. But do you think that's more of, uh, you know, you're dissatisfied with how you played, or do you feel like you're dissatisfied how you guys played as a team? I thought I played well. I mean, mm. there's nothing you can do. Team diff. True. Unlucky. All right. And uh, I want to ask you, Rave, I know there, there was a little bit of talk, especially since you've been playing it a lot, on that Gwen pick. Was Gwen, you know, a pick that you've been wanting to play for a long, long time prior to today, or was this just something that, you know, you were just kind of like, screw it, we might as well. We're already up, you know, 1-0 in the series. Uh, no, I wanted to play it against Never Lose, but never did. Because uh, Case is a pussy and doesn't want a first pick. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. Fine. Well, I mean, Fine. tell me I'm wrong. 
Fine. Tell me I'm wrong. This guy has an ego because he gets the counter pick every game. Whoa, fine. <laughs> fine. So well, I want I want to ask you guys because although your KDL season four journey might be done you guys still do get into fourth place but we do have those like for fun matchups so i want to ask you guys when it comes to your showcase match versus survey core uh do you think that it will be vastly different than this game or, or sorry this series or do you feel like it will sort of be um kind of the same momentum when it comes to versus pgs i don't yeah what's up yeah. Wait, yeah, i want to play yeah. Sorry, yeah. Nice, one. nice one survey like, core versus what did you say? survey core versus you guys do you guys think survey core will put up as big as a fight as pgs did i mean i think uh, survey core will win i think everyone on the against teams us wait wait, wait. Didn't going. you just say you think you win every game going into it though Oh, are we talking about against us? Yeah, yeah we're yeah, against yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, so said, I said them. you guys. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, man. We win. We win every game. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, you just I want to play Seraphine. <laughs> you are not allowed. He's not allowed. Yeah, you're going to be on Yone it's, duty. It, it's, it gets banned in the KDL. It gets banned in my Clash games. It's, like, unplayable. It gets banned in for fun game modes too, apparently. Nice ones too. Just um, go int on it a few times. Maybe someone will let you pick it. <laughs> I, I want to ask as well, a uh, final question here for this series. What is the rationale behind, you know, banning out Lulu for two out of the three games this series? We banned Lulu every game, Kryn. I thought you guys did it on that first, no, or on the we, second we game. Every game. Uh, but is there, is there, is there a reason why that? Lulu's, Lulu's broken, and then they're even, they're buffing her again, so I was like, damn. I just think Lulu's good. I love Riot. <laughs> yeah. Any Riot lovers in chat? I, I also yeah, love the dodge changes they're making. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to thank you guys very much. And uh, although it didn't really end the way that you guys wanted, uh, I still want to congratulate, you know, Rave um, for making it this far. It's definitely an improvement from your prior season. So congratulations. And uh, I'm looking forward to an exciting show match versus Survey Corps. Oh, that's going to be easy. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, 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 damn. Oh, damn. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Peace. Man, Kawhi Star is always just such a chatterbox. It's hard to uh, you know, <laughs> let him go sometimes. All right, and we will be moving in uh, PGS, your third place KDL finishers. All right, I'm not going to be moving Craig. Whoa. I don't Craig's think I, like basically the sixth member of PGS. I don't think I even can. I think it just crashes if I try to yeah. move him. I'm pretty sure it just crashes. It's weird. But we are talking now with Team PGS. PGS, how is it going? How do you guys feel? Have you told your families that the, the you won, you know, season four KDL third place? I told all my friends already. They're so oh. proud of me. Oh my shit! My brother just told me to. Shut but then up, they all so. just told me uh, I play tanks. And then they voted for, they voted oh. for Jin Sol MVP anyway, so oh, no, no, whatever, man, it doesn't wait, matter. Wait, but why am I just Janna? <laughs> yeah. Support bracket they, Janna. They banned out Lulu, so, you know, the secondary choice was the Janna. <laughs> well, in, in, the, in the poll. In the, in the poll. In the MVP poll. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're just Janna. relegated to Janna. It's not they, Kelly. They, no, they, they banned Lulu and Karma. Nobody knows I play Janna. It was my trump card. Was it? Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, since that is an unknown pick to you, Jin Sol, you've been playing, or Tila, I'm sorry, you've been playing, <laughs> fuck it, Tyler, you've been playing this <laughs> pick, hold on, hold on, you've been playing this pick oh so well, you know, starting out from season three as well, where you actually won a KDL championship. Were you expecting to play this Lucian mid today? Um, Not at first, but we realized that uh, ADC flex picks are just way better than anything else because ADC items are broken. True. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you were you looking for a flex on the Tristana initially into the Lucian or um, just whatever? At, at first, if they didn't ban Trist for the third game, mm -hmm. I, I was hoping they would pick it and I could try Lucian into Trist. But yeah, Lucian was definitely what I thought I was going to play from the beginning of that third draft. Interesting, interesting. Now, Kelly, as team captain, I want to ask you, you you know, you had such an amazing season last uh, season, sorry, with Tarum as the AD carry winning a championship this time around, actually having Henry, the best player, arguably from that dawn of day, the second place team with that season. Um, do you feel like you guys could have gotten farther if you guys had played your proper roles slash like taking uh, the regular season seriously? 
I don't think uh, if we I don't think it mattered if we took the regular season seriously. I think what mattered is if we practiced more. Mm-hmm. But we don't really care enough, I guess. We're just for nah. fun team from the end. I for fun. I think that for our SC game, we just played terribly. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I think if we played um how we did in this series against SE, we would have done much better and potentially would have won that one. All right, interesting, interesting. Uh, I want to ask you, Toma. You know, you you complained about junglers playing chem tank, uh, and then today, you know, you spam it until that Lilia game. Um, was there any sense of you know irony there, where you kind of looked in the mirror and you said, "What have I become? I've become what I hated." Or <laughs> it's more like uh, I've uh, given up on trying to counter it. So if you can't <laughs> beat them, you join them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you live long enough care. so you see yourself become a villain. He doesn't yeah, have exactly. to play anymore. We have a 100% loss rate on Toma tanks. <laughs> True. <Right. laughs> well, it's just unfortunate stuff that you did end up going that chem tank today. Uh, I want to ask yeah. you guys, were you expecting were, were you expecting three games in this series or were you hoping for, you know, the clean 2-0 versus ABD? I don't know what we were expecting. Dude, I don't know. You weren't really Tyler expecting Wilson, anything. Tyler also, what I was that 28-3 like to three game? What, what happened on that? Rebus is broken! I woke up like five minutes before the game and uh, I had no clue what we were doing and our draft just ended up in the dumpster. <laughs> Needed a warm-up game. Needed a warm-up game. Yeah. Right. Ergot into Rebus is unplayable. My... You blind if I have my W active and he taunts me, I'm just dead. You Yo, I was, I was like that meme, the this is fine meme. Like I was right, just farming right. my jungle at the mid and top for the time. Right, right. <laughs> Penelope, we made up for it. Me. We made up for it in the second, right, the was... third and second game. Yeah, they made up for it. Now I want to ask you because of that second game, right? Where the first game around, it did seem like Poseidon was just hovering top constantly, especially paired with the Ramus. Now, in the second game as well, you know, you re- you repeatedly had a lot of assistance in the top side and even extending that out to the third game. Do you feel like that's because of how they treated you on that first game just with constant jungle hover? I just started using my brain more. I think the first game, <laughs> my first, like, two deaths top was because I was way too pushed for- forward, so it was a free gank. Uh, there was one point where you were under tower. You think you're pushed up, or? Wait, on the, in the first game? Yeah, yeah, you were under your tower, and they just... No, he said first two. First two deaths. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah, sorry, so, deaths, sorry. Yeah. I, I heard first game. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, just in the first two, uh, in, like, the first two deaths of the first game, I shoved the wave way, for, way more forward, and I didn't even ward, so I kind of deserved... <laughs> and I think game three, like, I, I don't... I, I genuinely don't even blame Rave. He cannot move if Amalfi and Lily are on him. Like, Cho'Gath just can't move if anyone slows him or stuns him. It's a little unfortunate. Hello? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. I'm just try- no, 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 I'm just trying to think. I- I'm actually just cosplaying the Urgot. I'm just on a gray screen. Uh, well, I want to ask you. I want to, I want to, oh I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Peace of love, peace of love. But I want to ask you, you know, there was a point at which, you know, starting off that game one where the Ramus tried going for an all-in versus you with a W, uh, and you actually got that successful trade. Did you think that that was kind of a troll at that point, or did you still expect to lose out on that lane? I, uh, at that point, I knew that he beats me later in the game when he, he's like, I think like level around like six, but then early, I know Urgot is one of the most broken champions, uh, level one, his autos do way too much damage and his E gives him very big shield and very big flip. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to ask, you know, was there a difference between that game two and game one draft in the sense that you guys kind of woke up? Or do you feel like losing that hard kind of puts you in that, all right, guys, now we actually need to try? Okay, so during the first game, we uh, were most likely going to lose, so we just started thinking about our next draft. Yeah. <laughs> we were in game, and we were just, like, talking about drafts while we are getting, like, curb stomped. <laughs> so we had a lot more time to focus on our draft uh, for game two. That is uh, very interesting to hear, very interesting to hear. And we will actually be having uh, the results of the MVP vote. Uh, you know, it's not really surprising. Jana, the support player for your team, actually has <laughs> yeah. the MVP. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jana. I'm just kidding. Uh, Tilam, uh. Tyler, you actually did win by a huge margin. You actually had more votes than all your other teammates combined. Um, <laughs> Nobody else got votes but Toma. Oh, yeah. Toma got one vote. Toma got one vote. I mean, is he wrong, though? 
Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Toma, Toma got Toma got two, so. Oh, two. Oh, no. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, Tuma. He, maybe he told. Maybe he, wait. What is it? Tuma or Toma? It's Toma. <laughs> no, no, it's Toma. Should, he, he was making a pun. All right, because I've been saying Exoria. Right, I used to say Exora or something Exora. for like yeah, yes. Exora for like uh, one year. So I mean, I don't want to mess that nice. up again. I was told it's Exoria, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> That's why we don't have season three, actually. Vods, we, we just deleted all of them because I keep saying his name. <laughs> it was too weird. <laughs> it was too much. I'm like, oh no, it's too cringe. I can't. Either way, though, congratulations uh, on your third place finish. Um, first place to third place. You know, what a ride. And you guys were for funding it as well. But nonetheless, congratulations. And you guys can expect your reward uh, probably tomorrow. All right, congratulations and uh, thank you. Very much. Happy birthday, Jinsol. Uh, Happy birthday, Jinsol. Jinsol, Jinsol. Jinsol, yeah. There's Jinsoy. only one real Jinsol. Happy birthday, Jinsol. There's only one real Jinsol in the comms right now. Jinsoy. Ouch. All right, well, thank you very Well, I mean, to be fair, he could be a second place or a first place champ, so. True. I just want to throw that out uh, there. Yo. All right, uh, congratulations. You can do it. Right, Let's go, never lose. Oh, shoot. Actually, I should have asked that. All right, I kicked. Oh, I think I kicked right. Henry by accident. But oh, your final yeah. question, <laughs> yeah, final question: Henry. Never lose versus Survey Corps. Who do you think is going to take it? Uh, Ooh, uh let's go, Terrence. Uh, so. My best friend. Yeah, yeah, let's let's go, Terrence. I have friends on both teams, so I can't really say. But I'm just, I I support my boy Terrence no matter what. Let's go, Terrence. We believe in you. You win those, buddy. All right. Well, guys, I'm finding my PayPal. Thank you guys very very much. <laughs> All right, now I can actually properly disconnect, and uh, I actually I actually have a time for that stew, so I'll tell you after this. There we go. Yeah, I've, I've been planning that one. Anyways, we are going to conclude today's stream, though. Thank you guys very much for watching. Again, PGS are your third place uh, finishers for the KDL season four. I'm really really excited for it. Uh, I see Tanner Malding. Uh, in chat asking where his vet award is it's coming tomorrow so that i can just do all gifts on one day you know third place and sc every other group has gone in it uh you can ask other groups you can get your gift but you won't get stats lol dab uh but anyways <laughs> i just want to thank everyone for watching um we don't have a date yet for survey core versus never lose so we're just gonna have to put an asterisk soon if you are interested in knowing when we are going to be having our finals please do join our discord it is down below in the twitch panels along with every other uh you know social that we have youtube twitter things to that end as well but i hope that today's been exciting for you as it's been exciting for us it's definitely been a long day for some of us uh, but nonetheless, I just want to thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. Shout out to Devire. Shout out to Worry. All our other, uh, you know, casters as well who were uh, helping us get to this position so far. I believe that next time you do hear from us, it is going to be just me and Worry casting for finals. And uh, fortunately, we do have Stu representing, uh, you know, kind of staff playing in that finals as well. Not rigged, not biased. But I just want to thank <laughs> everyone for watching. Uh, Stu, do you have anything to say? Nothing much besides, you know, check out the all-star voting once again i am a show for all-star voting please vote for all-star voting so we can have a fun match thank you other than that uh look oh, forward you... to the show okay, match. yeah you did post it all right well definitely get to that all-star voting definitely look for the show matches and look for our finals again just join our discord down below all right we'll see you guys next time peace